Say, uh, forgive me for my unbecoming behavior. I was playing with Jason on your page. I know you seen your page. Uh, that one post you put up about voting, it went up to like about almost 200 uh comments on that. <laughs> nah, I haven't even paid attention. Yeah. All right. Um, we're gonna go over a few things. We want to be in the process. Uh, we're trying to come up with creative ways in order to make more money so that we can actually get a passport machine. Um, those that are interested can also look up the passport machine. But from our research, we're talking about almost $200,000. All right. Much different than the car machine. <laughs> Best believe that. All right. Um, so until we get a passport machine, um, there's some things in which that we can do now. So to reclaim your citizenship, um, hold on. All right, we got one of the chiefs right here, brother Sakari Kong, come up in the door. All right, um, basically, so like we said, until we can get a passport machine, which has been estimated around two hundred thousand dollars. Um, we have to do the next best, best thing. And basically, so to claim your citizenship as far as state citizens, um, there's some things that we can do. All right? Um, your birth certificate that is required for your passport is proof that you are a state citizen. Um, and not a 40-mile radius U.S. citizen, which is a 14th Amendment citizen. Which, of course, as we have said before, the 14th Amendment has never been fully ratified. Um, even though some want to believe that it has been, it has not. Um, I put up um, actually yesterday uh, proof that the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. All right? But that's another story. But... um. Basically, as it was saying, the birth certificate is required um, so you can get your um, passport. And as a state has proven that you're a state citizen and it is your title indeed to your right secured by um, the founding documents. And of course, there's four founding documents in which that we helped to write for those on which that wanted to do import and export in our empire. Um, which is the Star Spangled Banner, a banner, not a flag. It's a banner of, of trade, of commerce. That's what it is. Um, so um, the founding documents, of course, 1774 is the um, Articles of Association. 1776, the a Declaration, which is, of course, the Declaration of Independence, as it becomes called. And then... 1781, a Articles of Confederation, and then, of course, 1789, ratified 1791, the Constitution for the United States of America, not of and not the U.S. Constitution. Those actually do not exist. We're going by the Organic Constitution, 1789. All right? So... It is on bond paper. That's what the birth certificate is on, is bond paper. And as we showed um, last week, we showed specifically that in the lower left-hand corner, you will have the Midwest Bank Note Company or American Bank Note Company or some type of bank note company. So it's a bank note, and a bank note um, is on bond paper. And hence, you are the bond holder or beneficiary. All right. Um, how 
However, you will not find the term state citizen on the government form because they are deceptively hiding it from the public. They use terms such as non-citizen national or national or other. When you get your passport, it will look just like any other and say that you are na that your nationality is the United States of America. But what the hell is the United States uh, nationality? That's a, <laughs> technically that's not a nationality. Okay, that's not a nationality. Okay. Okay. That's not a nationality. The United States is not a nationality. America, in particular North America, continental, that is a nationality. American, hence the term why we call ourselves Moorish Americans. All right? Moorish Americans. Um, but of course, you know, even then, um, some don't like to use the ish on the word more because the word ish means relating to nationality, not necessarily a nationality, but it relates to a nationality. So more ish means that it relates to your nationality, which is being a more, which the word more and a meruka um, are connected. They are derived from the same root, meru. All right, as we've gone over before. So this is true if you are a state citizen, which technically we're not state citizens either. However, for all intents and purposes, we will say that we are utilizing state citizenship because we do domicile uh, within uh, a particular so-called state, all right, as it has been stated. And the only reason why there are states is because they have managed to keep you out of your e-state. All right. And what is your e-state? Your e-state is something in which that is real simple. Um, someone look up e-state for me in the Black Law Dictionary. Pete, sure. Somebody look that up for me right quick. Black Law Dictionary. Look up e-state. And then we will look up state. Peace, peace, y'all. Some more chiefs done dropped on in. <laughs> we got Chief Bree. Hey, I say what's your each peace, peace. We got um Chief Smith. We got every we got about about four four chiefs up in this piece right now. <laughs> I can talk some shit. <laughs> no, but no, just joking. <laughs> well, <laughs> well can um, someone please look up for me Black Law Dictionary is state as well as also state. I have a state, but it's quite lengthy. Okay. You still want me to read it? Yes, at least a paragraph of it. Okay, a state. State. The degree, quantity, nature, and extent of interest which a person has in real and personal property. An estate in land, tenements, and hereditaments signifies such interest as the tenant has therein. And it has uh, the condition or circumstances in which the owner stands with regard to his property, board, Board versus Cybol, 7, Washington 2nd, 279, 109, page 2nd, 535-539. In this sense, a state is commonly used in conveyances in connection with the words right, title, and interest, and is in a great degree synonymous with all of them. Okay. Now, that was East mm -mm, that was it, perfect. So East State, that's East State, right? Correct. All right, so you heard the Queen Mother state that it was something in which that you have an interest in. Well, since you are the land moors, because the word land and moors are synonymous, they have an interest in you. 
and that interest is via the birth certificate, which your name in all caps is the estate. <laughs> So they expect for you to be civilist mortuus until you actually are mortuus in the morgue. Mm -hmm. This is what they are banking on, that you will not wake up, that you will stay in a Rip Van Winkle sleep for more than 25 years. Best believe that. All right, this is what they are banking on. So, the person is 65 years old and they are receiving benefits from the government because they are, or those who are 65 and over, are the beneficiaries. The United States federal government is acting as trustee. But they forget to tell us that we, as the people, are the beneficiaries. They have us believing that we are merely the trustee. And what is the trust? The trust itself are those constitutions that we may mention of earlier. The Articles of Association, a declaration, misnomer, the Declaration of Independence, right? The Articles of Confederation and the Constitution for the United States of America. Those four. Those are the trusts. So the United States government, and the word govern, meant govern, as in uh, control, and then the word meant as in mental, mind, hence the term mind control, these are terminologies in which that, um, personally, I don't even like to use government, but because of all intended purposes, that is the actual definition. So this is true if you are a state citizen, 14th Amendment citizen or a U.S. citizen. All right. So this is why we have to make a, dis um, a distinction between 14th Amendment citizen and a U.S. citizen, all right, which according to most of the forms in which that you filled out, you are as such. According to the 14th Amendment, we are federalized citizens with a small c. Okay, we are federalized citizens with a small c. All right, so we looked at the 14th Amendment. We're not citizens based on the Dress Scott case decision, and the Dress Scott case decision specifically stated that we're not U.S. citizens. Matter of fact, Judge Taney allegedly made the ruling that we're not citizens. And what citizens were he t was he referring to? He's referring to U.S. citizens, small, well, at that time, uh, 1856, 1857, right before 1868 when the 14th Amendment was passed. He was stating in the sense of U.S. citizen, capital C. The small c, U.S. citizen, did come into play until 1868 with the so-called passing of the 14th Amendment, which, once again, the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. In other words, it never was passed fully. So there's some misconceptions that we still have to clear up. And that is definitely one of them. So I put on uh, Facebook, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, one, that fact. And 
went to actual documentation in which that uh, makes it clear. All right, technically, uh, none of us are a U.S. citizen, um, truthfully, because uh, U.S., which is United States, is not a nationality. That is the that is the state of the union, as they are united, and the unions are the states themselves. And of course, the state in which that you domicile in would be quote unquote nationality in that regard. All right. However, we didn't utilize some of these state names. All right. But that's another story. We'll get to that in a second. So I say, like I said, we are not citizens of the United States. According to the legal research undertaken by attorney William D. Graves, as written in the Journal of Christian Reconstruction, volume 13, number 2, 1994, the required 28 states, three-fourths majority ratification was never completed, as I always state was never fully ratified. And as um, Professor Graves states, all right, by March 1867, only 17 of 37 states, or 11 short of the required three-fourths, 28, had ratified the 14th Amendment. Under duress, at least six southern states attempt ratification, and their number was were added to the 22 northern states and Tennessee, presumably making the number of ratifying states 29 or one more than required. However, both Ohio and New Jersey had rescinded previous ratification, but was nevertheless counted among the 29 states by the U.S. Secretary of State. Therefore, only 27 states have legally ratified the 14th Amendment, one state short of the required majority required by the Constitution for the United States of America. The unlawful, fraudulent 14th Amendment attempt to make a de facto U.S. federal black citizen introspective of the state republics of union and in total opposition to international law and in total violation of human rights. This new U.S. federal citizen is displayed with a small lowercase c, which means a diminished capacity at law. In other words, this is them telling you in law that you are a minority, all right, a minority. All right, someone can read minority for me after we restate. All right, so here it says this new U.S. federal citizen is displaying with a lower, with small lowercase c, which means a diminished capacity at law. At the forming of the Constitution for the United States of America in 1789, ratified in 1790, 91, um, the only de jure citizen that was recognized was the state citizen within one of the state republic. Citizen with a capital C, which means constitutionally recognized. This particular state republic citizen in the U.S. Constitution was only identified as an English Albion adult male at the um, exclusion of the English Albion adult female at the United States of America is and always has been an Albion English Brotherhood entity and bastard child of its mother crown of England. Now, this is mostly true. However, according to Judge Curtis, he stated that Moors were citizens, capital C, in over five states during this stage that Judge Tanney was given his ruling um, in 1856-1857. 
therefore making void the 14th Amendment also because it wasn't necessary. Because Moors was already so-called capital C citizens, constitutionally recognized citizens, which means American citizens, capital C, which you now refer to as an American national. Since there is no um, capital C citizen any longer, that's recognizable. Unless you go back to the organic constitutions and laws. All right. So, what does state mean? Someone please read state for me. State. A people permanently occupying fixed territory brought together by common law inhabitants and custom to one body politic exercising through the medium of an organized government. Independence, sovereignty, and control over all persons and things within its boundaries, capable of making war and peace, of entering into international relations with other communities of the of the globe. Let's say one of the uh, component commonwealths of states of the United States of America. The term is sometimes applied also to government agencies authorized by state, such as municipal corporations. Okay, so notice how, how, how they just tricked you with that last sentence. So it starts off that a state is a people, <laughs> yep. right? State is a people. And then all of a sudden, that last sentence, read that last sentence again. Uh, the term is sometimes applied to a governmental agency uh, authorized by states such as municipal corporations. Mm. So municipal corporations or states? <laughs> wow. See, this is the technology that's going on here. They tell you what a real state is, which is a people. In the first sentence, by the last sentence, they tell you that is a fictitious corporation. <laughs> So you can start out a state that ha that is sovereign as according to the definition, but then ends up being a fictitious a fictitious corporation, which this is what they have turned this into. Remember the U.S. citizen is a legal fiction, a U.S. corporation. <laughs> There it is. So this is true if you are a state citizen, 14th Amendment citizen, or a U.S. citizen. They did, they do this to hide what they're doing. Remember that the U.S. citizen is a legal fiction, a U.S. corporation with no rights. So here it was, in the beginning, you were sovereign. By the time you read the last sentence, you have no rights. A 14th Amendment citizen has little rights, only privileges. That's what a 14th Amendment citizen really has, is privileges. And then those privileges are, are relegated uh, 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 based on the policies of the politicians who work for the U.S. corporation. How do we know that this is a U.S. corporation? Because Allen, who was a, um, a, a House of Representative, uh, as we spoke about last week, he specifically stated that Barack Obama was the president of the United States Corporation. Mm -hmm. A state citizen, however, has absolute freedom and, lot and liberty protected by our finding documents. You are not a legal fiction, nor a U.S. corporation or capital U.S. small case citizen nor are you a 14th Amendment citizen. See, they have all these various citizenships in order to fool the masses, to fool the people. So when you have more saying that they citizens... Queen, can you mute your phone, please? 
So we would have to ask, which citizen are you? U.S. corporation? U.S. citizen? Which is a legal fiction? Are you a 14th Amendment citizen? Are you a state citizen? Or are you indigenous, aboriginal, national? Well, according to... Um, the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, it states that indigenous people have the right to become part of the life in the state where they was born. So you can become a state citizen technically as an indigenous aboriginal. But you cannot become a 14th Amendment citizen, as we already proven that it was never fully ratified. You cannot become a U.S. corporation because, oh, well, only if you want to continue being looked at as being a corporate fiction, a corpse. That's where the term corpse comes from, is from corporate, corporation. And the only place that we know that we see the term corpse is in the graveyard and the name is in all caps. Fiction. So, once again, you can become part, you can become a citizen in the, in the state in which that you live. This is based on the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. All right. Um, when you look up the rights of indigenous people, the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People, and you read, let me go to the one that I'm talking about here particularly. And it's... it's From a juristic standpoint, all right, let me find it and I'll read it. All right, this is what it says. Article 33. All right, no coins in this Article 33, right? 33. It says indigenous people have the right to determine their own identity or membership in accordance with their customs and traditions. This does not impair the right of indigenous individuals to obtain citizenship of the states in which they live. Hmm. Sound like it? Like, like it's in and closed to me says it does not impair the right of indigenous individuals to obtain. So that means that you're not, so even if Judge Taney was saying that you're not a U.S. citizen, nor will you ever be, based on this Article 33, individuals to obtain citizenship of the states in which they live. Two, indigenous people have the right to, de to determine the structure and to select the membership of their institution in accordance with their own procedures. So Article 33 is very powerful because it tells you that even though you may not be a citizen as far as being indigenous aboriginal, you can obtain citizenship of the states in which they live. So, so say that you was born um, in New York and you have a birth certificate of New York that birth certificate being that is the name in all caps is saying that they have transformed you into a corporate fiction a artificial person a dummy so they can move money through as they made you a collateral for the debt of the United States this is technically what happened? 
All right. So can that birth certificate work in your behalf? Of course it can. But only after you do what we talked about last week, and that is authenticate the birth certificate, that is to do a title of ownership on the birth certificate and capture the birth certificate through a UCC-1 financial statement as a non-UCC filing at the Register of Deeds or the County Recorder's Office. Once you have done so, then you can do as we're talking about here, which is, and all of this is after your nationality. Nationality is number one. This is what happens after you do your nationality. So now we're talking about you now moving in the direction of declaring a passport. All right. All right. So this is a sample passport form, a DS-11 as it is called. All right. And so you can put in your social security number. As a matter of fact, let me show you a sample of it. Here it is. DS-11. This is how you become a state citizen. Since the 14th Amendment has, was never ratified, that makes you stateless. Hence, sovereignless. You can't be a sovereign. You can't be tied to land unless you declare your nationality, and that's the signs of declaring your nationality. They give you a nationality, a tie to land for land and the word more or synonymous. Someone look up land for me and read land. Mm -hmm. uh, land. In the most general sense, comprehends any ground, soil, or earth whatsoever, including fields, meadows, pastures, woods, moors, waters, marshes, and roots. All right. Uh, All right. So the word moors is embedded inside the definition of land. So we are the moors, and we are in, in thus, hence, embedded inside the definition of land. Moors and land are synonymous. They are exchangeable. Yes. Yes, I mean, I was, uh, uh, I, I, I always say, uh, I can know why uh, this colonial structure, uh, so-called government, corporate fiction government, uh, don't like us to say we are Moors because when we say we are Moors, not only we are tied to the land, I'm saying uh, I'm tied to the land of America and also the, uh, the land of the earth, but also right. I am America. Exactly. I am the land of the earth. And mm -hmm. that, that's why they can't stand us to say that. Right. Right, exactly. I totally agree, Brother Fahim. Chief Fahim, no, no doubt about that. Um, Shekel, um, Chief. So, thank you. That's how we have to look at it. Um, put in your social security number before you did not put in your social security number or simply put in all zeros. The older forms said that the social security is voluntary in the instructions of the application. It still is voluntary and a felony for them to demand it. See Title 42 USC, which United States Code 408. A8. But if you leave it off, they may deny you the passport and keep your money. It does not matter that you give it to them. Even if they took the application, they will write in SS number on the form somewhere. So write in your social security number. All right? Um, so this is what they're talking about here. All right? 
And this is 408 with these penalties of what we're talking about. It says, in general, whoever, for the purpose of causing an increase in any payment authorized to be made under the subchapter of for the purpose of causing any payment to be made where no payment is authorized under the subchapter shall make or cause to be made any false statement or rep representation, um, including any false statements or representation in connection with any matter arising under chapter E, subchapter E of chapter 1, or subchapter A or E of chapter 9 of the Internal Revenue Code 1939. All right? Now you get down to eight, it says disclosures. Use or compel the disclose closure of the social security number of any person in violation of the law of the United States. So yes, the law states that um, you're not supposed to give your social security um, card number, which of course the social security administration say that too. However, the problem is when filling out your social security number um, on the DS-11 form, if you do not put it, then they may not take it. Matter of fact, they will not take it. So this is what it was talking about, that you have to give them the number, um, and that's fine. Right here it says, I declare under penalties of perjury all of the following. It says, either I am a citizen or non-citizen national of the United States non-citizen national of the United States. So it's right on the passport form. You either is a 14th Amendment citizen, because that's a small C, 14th Amendment citizen, or a non-citizen national of the United States, which would be a United States national, or an American national. Okay. Um, on the passport, uh, for the mailing address, put in care of with the mailing address and use the standard mailing address with zip code. This means that there is merely where you uh, receive your mail, which is temporary mailing location. You do not live in their jurisdiction. And for the permanent address, you can use RFD, which is Rural Free Delivery for the address and then the city and state, all right? Um, then use all zeros for the zip code. This means that you live in the Republic and not in any fictitious um, jurisdiction, all right? So this is um, here at the line um, two or what it's talking about here. If they force you to put something else in, then do it. It is only a way to make them pay close attention to your application, that you check off no to all questions on U.S. citizenship. So you check off no, you're not a U.S. citizen in any shape, form, or fashion. So when you see here in this section, right, here, um, let me see, do they have it right here? Do, 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 do. No, I got to come further down. All right, I'm going to show it to you in a second. All right. Put without prejudice above your signature. This ensures that you are not a legal fiction and are not contracting away your rights. Although this should not be needed as a state citizen, I would still put it. You can put it without prejudice, uh, which actually is UCC 1-1. Um, uh, or you can put uh, UCC 1-308, all right? They repeal 1-207, all right? It's 308. So although this should not be needed as a citizen, um, you want your um, passport expedited. The faster you get it, the faster you will be free. In addition, the State Department will delay your passport to a minimum allotted time otherwise. They do not want you to have it. They do not include um, do not include affidavits of citizenship with your applications or underlying non citizen national. Um, you don't have to underline that part. 
or it will be denied. Do not sign it until you have until you are in front of the accepted agent. We are not allowing to refuse your application or make any changes. To do so is a crime. You can report the person to the United States Attorney General. Right. Um, this is the section that we're talking about here. As you see, uh, they call it your John Hancock uh, right there without prejudice. And by the way, John Hancock was a more, another story. Um, but here, as you see it, even if you already have a passport from before and you have a current passport, you can get a new passport with this method by using another DS-11 form. And yes, you have to put down on the application that you have had one in the past and show the old passport with the application or fill out a loss form if you do not have one. All right? It does not matter what you put on your previous passport. You are updating your information. Sometimes the department will write a passport holder that they are being denied because they already have a passport. I'm not sure. But I think that you have to update your information at that point um, that you are a state citizen and your current passport most likely shows that when the information is run. So anyone who is denied a passport for various reasons, such as um, a back child support, um, et cetera, are still protected. Your information was updated that um, was updated that you are a state citizen. All right, so this is what we're talking about. Um, I personally have done all of the above myself and others. It is rumored that the State Department will require proof of travel, such as visa or other proof of travel. This is because the enemy is in panic. They do not want the slaves to escape. It is merely a way to discourage you from getting this type of passport. And most countries do not require a visa for Americans. So if this um, becomes the case, I suggest you simply make a hotel reservation for a night or two across the border in Canada or someplace, then print off a copy of the reservation for proof to include in your application. You can always cancel the reservation after you get your passport. If you change your mind or are not able to go, that's fine. Do not put down that you are a citizen, um, you are a citizen or, or on anything. They use his, this, um, have a place of the form to check off state citizen, but not anymore. The usual choice they give you is other or non-citizen national. Yes, they make it confusing as possible. Either is okay. So check off either non-citizen national, national, or other for your citizenship. Or the form may only have a yes or no question. If you are a U.S. citizen, check off no. Checking off no to U.S. citizenship does not prevent you from benefits or rights. If you are registered to vote, you can still vote. It does not matter. The social security number is voluntary, but again, if you do not put it on the passport, or you will be de um, or you will be denied, be denied. So it does not hurt you to use it if you need to. All right, as we said, always put the phrase without prejudice with your signature. State citizens do not have to do this, but it sure does not hurt. It means that you are not giving up your rights or otherwise contracting. See UCC 1-308, which was formerly UCC 1-207. So here we are, we go to UCC 1-308, and it says performance or Acceptance under reservation of rights. A party that with explicit reservation of rights perform and promises performance or absence to perform in a matter. In a matter demanded or offered by the other party is not thereby prejudice the rights reserved. Damn, right off. I guess you got. <laughs> I 
All right. All right, so right a party that with explicit reservation of rights perform or promises performance or absent absence to performance in a matter manner demanded demanded excuse me or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserved such words as without prejudice under protest or the likes are sufficient all right that's UCC or Uniform Commercial Code 1-308. That's the meaning. All right. So when you get a job, you fill out the form I-9 form, right? Check off non-citizen national. You, you can use your social security um, number here if you wish, but the form itself says voluntary. And as they hold out SS, but not taxes, all right, it says, of course, Social Security, but not taxes. But you do not have to. The employer has the choice on your passport for ID or both um, your DL, driver's license, and Social Security card. Use your passport for ID. Claiming state citizen does not prevent you from getting any benefits from anything. Sign everything with the phrase without prejudice. I, as well as others, do not use the W-4 form for tax withholding. We use the W-8-B-E-N or W-8. Some employers will not accept it and demand a W-4, but it is illegal for them to demand it. But it seems most employers will and should accept the W-8-B-E-N. You do not have to file taxes. If you feel uneasy about not paying taxes, you can continue to pay them and show how your passport works for you. But you are only feeding the United States District Court, uh, District um, of Columbia, excuse me, beast that is enslaving the country. So when you buy a gun, you fill out the form, do not check off that you have renounced your U.S. citizenship because you haven't renounced anything. You never was a U.S. citizen as we have already proven by the 14th Amendment, quote unquote, <laughs> Right, 14th Amendment. So there is no citizenship to renounce. I've had plenty, bought plenty of guns since, and used my passport for ID rather than a state ID. Again, not everyone understands this. So some gun dealers are apprehensive. Just tell them to run the application. If anything is wrong, they will deny it, which has never happened with anyone I know. All right? Never put down that you live in the United States. You live in the United States of America. Or simply say you live in America. On lots of forms, you will see U.S. or United States. But they do not make it clear if it is the federal corporation or the republic. I believe if it asks what countries you live in, then it mean, must be the republic, not the corporation. The corporation is not a country. You find this all through the United States codes and the codes of federal regulation for the purposes of confusion. So study careful to see what they mean by the United States. All right. Well, we already know if they say United States, then that is talking about the corporate fiction. Once you receive your passport, you should never have to pay taxes. You can carry any gun. You should not get tickets. You do not need license, permits, or fees. The bills of exchange will work. They cannot come after you for debt or foreclosure. You may get a few letters for not paying debt, but you cannot be sued for it. Simply send back any summons with a cease and desist letter, as mentioned later, or better not answer it all. All right? Or answer it. They cannot even get a default judgment. The only thing you cannot do is cause injury, harm to their property. All right? They can't arrest you for causing injury to their property, to someone. And anyone that causes injury needs to be arrested. 
But remember, you cannot cause injury, damage property or harm to someone, all right, or to their property, as I refer to them as. Because property can't own property. When you join the United States military, what happens? Oh, you good. You become <laughs> You become right. property of a corporation. Say it again. You become property of the United States and corporation. That's right. When you right when you join the military, you are their property. Matter of fact, it's on the damn sack. Yeah. <laughs> it says your name and it says U.S. property. <laughs> I have so, a yes. When you spoke about the guns, um, I I bought a lot of guns and I've used my. Washita ID, um, mm-hmm. national ID to get the gun. That's the best. That's the best way to do it. The only <laughs> thing about it is they accepted it or whatever. At the time though, they didn't have a other box where I could put w- me being part of Washita. So they only had Native American. So I had right. Native American on there. The problem right. is, is that when I, I was approved for my gun, but. What happened was they told me I had to register my gun, and I had so many days to take it to the police department. I didn't want to do it, but I went on ahead and did it because they said that is the requirement. And I didn't know exactly how I would have went about not having to register my gun at the police department. Well, that's the thing. They would not have allowed for you to not register your gun at the police department. (laughs) <laughs> you have had to register your gun, um, your, your guns. Um, they have forms there in which that they will ask you um, if you are a U.S. citizen. Once again, you could have um, filled it out the exact same way in which that you filled it out at the um, pawn shop or at the um, I gun store. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when I went to the gun store, I filled it out and I gave them right. you know, my nationality ID. Um, but what it was, right. they give you a slip, so right. you gotta, that you got to drop off it's at the slip. apartment. Right, so right, it's, right, and so, it. right, and so on the form at the police department, um, they ask you, or oh, if you are a U.S. citizen, and of course you could have, um, stated just like we've done with the passport, um, know that you're not a U.S. citizen. Um, then they will have to give you another space or other, or either ask you to write up something in which that states otherwise. And then, of course, Native American, blah, blah, blah. That's about the only thing, that's the closest thing that we have on the floor. That's right. the closest thing we have on the floor. But by it being already registered with the state, my gun, uh, at this point, that is, is that kind of null and void? Is that put it back up in the contract, or can I put it in a trust and be able to protect my property that way? You can still put it in the trust and protect your property that way. Okay. You have to make sure that all the um, file numbers and all of that is um, mentioned, the description of the guns, everything. Matter of fact, um, after you put it in the trust, I will actually take that information down to the Register of Deeds and put it on the public record so that, um, that there's some type of notice in which that has also been done. Um, then you can send a copy of that information to um, the police this, um, police department, sheriff department, state highway patrol, um, putting them on notice too, through a lo- notice of legal um, construction. Legal notice. Well, it's called a constructive legal notice. Okay. Okay. But up here, they don't have the register of deeds. It's only based on the uh, house right. up here right. uh, for right. the land. So up right. here, I have to find another place, another source. Um, right. to put it on file. Put it on record. Um, so I normally put my stuff on in Alabama. Do I have to still keep it in that? Can I put it in another state and just take them the paperwork that will come back from Alabama that I normally put stuff on record? Um, if that's the case, if you've been doing it like um like that, then yes, you can do that um the exact same way. Okay, thank you. All right, even though you can do all these things, I highly recommend that you do not shove it in their face, be on good behavior, and do not draw attention to yourself. Also, give any police officer a friendly chance to discover who you are. Hand him whatever he asks for. Most usually, you will not get a ticket in most states except for three. I'm addressing this later. It says if you write your, if you get, um, if he writes you a ticket, sign it without prejudice and forget it. Do not go to court. There is nothing they can do lawfully. 
do not go to court. There is nothing they can do lawfully. All right. Now, um, I'm saying this, um, you know, once you uh, do your state citizenship and you become an American national in that sense, or real American citizen with a capital C. Um, now, if you have not done these steps, then I recommend you go to court. All right. Once you go to court, what you're going to do is do a special appearance prior to going. And you will send them in your special appearance the issue of jurisdiction, which is based on the Dress Scott case decision, where it states Judge Taney ruled that we're not U.S. citizens, Negroes are not U.S. citizens, nor are African, um, nor are those who are African descent or U.S. citizens, nor will they ever be. So therefore, it leaves the ball in the courts um, in order to fuss over uh, jurisdiction. You go to court, you simply say, my affidavit itself, my notice speaks for itself. It states what needs to be stated. You don't really have to say anything on, on your behalf. You know, um, you're there in court under threat, arrest, and coercion. If the judge asks you where you live, you say, in my skin. Because <laughs> you don't live in a house. If you leave the house, the house does not die. <laughs> However, if your soul leaves your body <laughs> and that cord is cut, then your body dies, but you do not die. It's the same concept. All right? If you get in your automobile, it drives you to where you need to go. However, if you get out of your automobile, you are still you, and the car can't move. So technically, those are corpse. And this is how they was able to label your physical body as a corpse, understanding that the soul can leave the body. Hence, makes you a corpse. So this is how they've been playing these word games with us. But you can play it back on them. You live in your body. This is the only house in which that you live. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that your body is the temple of God? <laughs> so it, when they ask you, where do you live in my body? That's the answer. You do not say at 238 East Andrews Avenue or uh, uh, 133 uh, 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 South uh, Garnett Street. No, you don't live there. As soon as you say that you do, oh, we got jurisdiction. They don't have jurisdiction. When you say you live in your body, there's no jurisdiction. They will ask you, where were you born? Um, as my wife always say, for my mother, Sakai. <laughs> in other words, from her vaginal womb. <laughs> I wasn't born in the state. What are you talking about? So see, these are the things that we have to master, and we have to tell our um, tribal members um, these same sciences. Otherwise, they can get caught up until we can fully get our head out of the lion's mouth. These are just procedures until we can get the head out of the lion's mouth. Right now, our head is in the lion's mouth. We're not um, meant to be malicious um, groups. Now, Black Lives Matter. Several law enforcement officers, officials have confirmed for me that when they pull someone over, it is a red flag or restricted because of the state citizen passport, and they have no jurisdiction to arrest them or write tickets. But they are told to write the ticket anyway and let the court handle it. 
They have no idea what happened. Nothing did happen. Do not pay the ticket. Do not go to court. Once again, that's only after you have your state citizenship by way of a passport. Which on the passport, it says USA. It doesn't say U.S. Most of the passports come from out of Louisiana. Louisiana has different laws than the rest of the states because it also has old French law, Spanish law, and U.S. law. However, there are now currently two or three states that I know of where the shadow state, deep state, as some say, criminals have taken over and sometimes will instruct the officer to give you a ticket. All right. At this moment, at the time, they're Arkansas, Missouri, and Colorado. And I have heard of a couple more states since. I had a, um, I had a brother who was in um, Missouri, and they try their best to deny um, information. They try their best to deny the information. You know, they try their best. Um, the judge um, um act like he wasn't there. The judge um. Uh, removed himself. I mean, all types of stuff. They they would they would do their best not to have to abide by this. So I know it's true in Missouri for sure. Arkansas the same way. All right. I don't know about Colorado, but he says that this is three places. I know at least two of the three here. He said I've heard of a couple more states since. Now, the other states that I know is Virginia and um, Maryland. And Maryland got a host of moors there. All right? Matter of fact, Maryland make plates for the moors there. <laughs> mm. You can get plates made by Maryland for your automobile. Yeah, so Maryland is a little bit more lenient, but Virginia, oh man, Virginia is probably just as bad as Missouri. Yeah, go ahead, Brother Al. Uh, do I know this brother you were talking about in Missouri? Uh, no, 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 I don't think you um, know the brother, Brother Al, but um, no, you don't know the brother. Um, He's been locked down since 2012. So he's been locked down for eight years now. Oh, okay. Mm hmm I know uh, uh, Amir and I used to go to court. Uh, we didn't, it seemed like we didn't have that much problem with him. Exactly. So the thing is, is that as long as there are moors in Pacific areas pushing the, the constitutional rights or the constitution guarantee rights, as we would say, and as long as they're pushing the indigenous aboriginal uh, rights, then you shouldn't have a problem. Okay. Because I know that you've been in court cases, Brother L, in Missouri, and y'all won. So, yes. right, so y'all won. So that means that it's based on judges and those who want to abide by their constitutional oath. Because everyone took their oath to the Constitution in there. I remember I said that. I said, hold up, I'm the only one who hasn't taken the oath to the Constitution. Everyone else, everyone else here has. And I asked the um, officer, when was the last time you read the Constitution? Now, he was 32 at the time. He said the last time he read it when he was 16. I said, so you haven't read the Constitution half of your age ago? 
but yet you're taking an oath to something that you haven't read a half of your age ago, and you said that you will uphold the law when you don't even know the law? Because you haven't read it half of your age ago? Because 16 is half of 32. <laughs> so here you are, 32 years old, and you are a police officer, law enforcement, took your oath to the law, the Constitution, but yet don't know the law. So, I mean, by the time I finished with him, he was crying on the stand, on the stand. <laughs> and he was mad. He was huffing mad, too. But there's nothing he can do. Because then we ended up suing him. Um, we took it from the, from the superior to the um, federal level. We ended up suing him at the federal level after that. All right. All right. So, I mean, it, it's, just, it's up to the people on how far that we need to push and for, we can sh for they can know that we're serious about this. So, you get them in district court, you get them in superior court. Only thing you have to do in district court is at the, ju the, um, the, at the end of when the judge gives his ruling, you say, um, Your Honor, in all due respect, I object to your own ruling, and um, I, want to take, I want to appeal this to a higher court. That's it. You ain't got to say nothing else. The judge would say duty no lead, um, and the um, clerk, she'll write down um, for it to go into superior court. If you don't like the ruling there, you do the same thing. I like to take up take this up to a higher court. You take it to the appellate court. You don't like it there, then you take it to federal court. You don't like it there, then you take it to the, um, the United States appellate court. You don't like it there, then you take it to the Supreme Court. I've done all of that. And at the Supreme Court, you got to write the same amount of information that you write for one judge for all nine judges. Each one needs their own package. <laughs> So this is serious, you know, and once again, this is only because we have not set up our own court system and have it running so they can transfer the cases to us. But we have no choice until we have the people to actually build a nation, which technically we have the people, but they are so far spread it. And then we would have to build our system state to state, as they would say, or as we would call it, territory to territory. Because when you read the definition of state, it's the people in the territories. That's the state, the real state. Now they have turned it into corporations. When they took and abbreviated South Carolina from up in lowercase South Carolina to SC or CAPS, they turned it into a corporation. They took it from we the people and, tur and turned it into a corporation. All right. So at this moment in time, there's Arkansas, Missouri, Colorado, and I've heard a couple of more states since. Like I said, Virginia, um, uh, South Carolina was acting up at one time. Maryland was acting up at one time, but they fell back in line. Um, New Jersey was acting up at one time, but they came back in line. The only state that I know of that really has not come back in line is Virginia. Them jokers, which is a Commonwealth state, do not want to hear none of this. Because you think about it, Walter Plucker, who was the one who denationalized Many of the so-called American natives, or as we would say, indigenous Americans in Virginia of aboriginal tribes there, what happened was is that he denationalized them, took away their nationality, and made them Negro, Blacks, and Coloreds. So since Virginia started it, Virginia seem as if it's the state in which that wants to hold on to it the hardest. 
because it started from there with Walter Plucker, who was um, the Register of Deeds, and they was destroying records after records after records of those who identified themselves as being indigenous and aboriginal. This is a known fact. And then the rest of the states picked up on it. So some states still hold on to that same mentality, but there's always ways around it in order for you to spark, um, you know, them into understanding what's going on. And I know that this is real because I've had Masonic Shriners to walk up on me and ask the question, are we Moors? It was my brother and I, um, Mikael, he's also a chief. He, they walked up on us and they said, are y'all Moors? There was that, this is at uh, Walmart because they seen the plate on the car. And he said, yes, sir, we're Moors. They also seen the feds on the head, the pen. We need United Washington pens. That's what we need. It's good that we recognize the federal, um, our federal flag. So he said, oh, y'all Moors? He said, yes, sir. And then he goes on to say, well, maybe y'all can help us with some of the things in which that's taking place in the world today. No more after that. No other conversation. He just turns around, walk away, get in his truck, and leave. On the front of the truck was Sue Dan Temple. Now, if you know anything about North Carolina, Sue Dan Temple is the only Shriner, well, the only European Shriner, Masonic Shriner Temple in North Carolina. Sue Dan Temple. Now, where's Sue Dan located at? Sue Dan, from what I know, is located in Africa. <laughs> now, that's amazing that a European Masonic Shriner now has on his car the temple that he belongs to is called Sudan Temple. Knowing Sudan is in Africa. And the word Sudan means the land of the blacks. <laughs> and they call themselves Moors too. Yes, they do. And so here he is wearing this plate on the front of his car. So we know that these Albions know, especially these Masonic Shriners, who oftentimes are the judges, or these Eastern Stars, who oftentimes are the female judges. They know. I had a female judge the first time I had an on court date. Um, I went, this was years ago. Um, I raised my hand and did a fidelity sign like Prophet Noble Drali, like we do as Moors, and I said, I'm a Moor. She fussed at the sheriff so bad, at the bailiff, that is, so bad, she said, young man, if I t I'm telling you to leave him, talking about me, to leave me alone. She said, young man, I told you before to leave him alone. If you mess with him again, I'm going to have to remove you. She talking about removing the bailiff on my behalf. Wow. And then, she, and then she gives it up. Then she say, young man, look, I know a little bit more about these things than you do, and I advise you to leave him alone. And this is the way that she was talking to him as a bailiff. And so, of course, he's mad now at me and my wife. You know, but me and my wife, we laughing now because she, she told you to leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But she meant that. And she was on good behavior the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I knew that this Morris shit worked, as we would say. That's uh, why I turned back. And this had to be around 2005, six, somewhere around there. So this is how I know. This is real. Because I have Masonic Shriners from the, uh, um, from the Sudan Temple to give up the um, secrets, at least what they could, as well as also Eastern Star Judge. 
Now, both of our beyonds are Europeans. And they had to protect the rights of them. And, they, and then they told us, now, now think about it. Why would they think that the Moors were dead? <laughs> When, when, if, 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 if Negroes, Blacks, and Cullets were already Moors, why would they think that the Moors was dead? Because obviously, the Moors made a distinction between Negro, Blacks, and Cullets and Moors. I'll give you an example. Yeah, go ahead, Brother Al. Uh, uh, one of the, uh, one, well, one of the uh, court cases I went on to uh, uh, with a mayor right. out here in uh, Edwardsville, Missouri. No, no, Edwardsville. I think it's Edwardsville. And uh, I, I was sitting, and the mayor was standing in front of the judge with his feds on, and I had my feds on. And, but the judge told his LBI, sir, you got to take off your cap. You can't wear your, you can't wear your hat in here. You got to take that off. But he said nothing to me in the mirror. Oh, no. Well, there ain't nothing to you. Nothing to you in the mirror. He said nothing about our, our feds. No, because the, the feds ain't a hat. <laughs> as they would say. It's a statement. It's a religious headdress. I just wanted to share that with you. Oh, yeah. So this is real for the Moors and which that have gone through these situations. This, this, this is real, you know. So we can't give up now. We have to continue pushing. And um, prior, as they would say, the, um, the cattle, uh, in this case, chattel, because they too become chattel property, um, you know, but they have to give up the information. They have to give it up. But see, understand that Masonic Shriners, their whole thing actually is to stop the rise of the Moors. So when this Albion, who was 75 years old, apparently um, said to us that we thought y'all was dead, what that meant? Did he mean that, you know, we thought, you know, all the Negroes was, you know, just love to be black and, and colored or African American? That's what we speculate that he meant because he didn't mean dead in the sense of actually dead. He meant dead as in civilist more too, that we fell under the brand labels, that we was no longer able to function as Moors as we once were. As we once did. But once he realized that we was Moors, that conversation turned quickly into hopefully you can help us with some of the things that's going on in the world today and then turning around and just leaving just as quickly as he came and said that. And if it wasn't for us paying attention to the license plate, seeing that he was part of the Sudan Temple, we probably would have missed the whole Masonic Shriner talk. That he gave to us. So when you see good old Shriners about 70, 75, 80 years old walking towards you, best believe they're trying to find out what is going on with you today. Because you shouldn't have woken up. How did you break the Rip Van Winkle? Sleep process, the mind control process. How did you do it? Because you thought we had all of you under the spell, the spell of Leviathan, the spell of Kingo. We thought that we had you. What happened? Okay, so this is what um, was. was mm -hmm. So what says something? Microphone. So I get it. I need. I need some money. No, it's all right. Oh, she got money. Yeah, I got some money on my phone. Oh shoot! Here. <laughs> All right. But there's no instances um they put you over the state citizenship. So hold on, let's let's read that again. 
All right. But they put you over the red flag status for an unknown amount of time. Then there, there, then if there's no incidences, they put you over to state. Now, this is true. I know this for a fact. All right. So basically what it said, but if you found out from the government official that the state department has not put, has not been putting people all the way over to state citizen status for past few years. Unlawful, of course, but they put you over the red flag status for an unknown amount of time. Then, if there's no incidences, they put you over to state citizen status. The difference is only concerning traffic tickets. Everything else, such as taxes and lawsuits, are still the same. Do not worry about that. So, you know, you can meet a rookie a rookie, they out, they're anxious, you know, they're trying to make sure that they get, um, do a, you know, good service, you know, for the department, not for you, for the corporation. Um, so they're out trying to do what they need to do. Since the passport removes your social security number name from all of the governmental attacks, they cannot come now come after you that way. So they attack the driver license itself. They suspended the license and put a warrant on, out on your arrest. Now, it's real simple. What you want to do is you yourself, think about it, what you would do. You would go down to the DMV and surrender your license in good standing. So that means that your license cannot be revoked, cannot be um, cannot be expired, cannot be suspended. Your driver's license has to be in good standing. You will return your driver's license back to the DMV. They will give you a surrenderance license. I mean, surrenderance letter. It's called a surrenderance letter. Right? This is if you are revoking your right, um, revoking your right to, um, uh, revoking your driver's license, as we would call it. You revoking your driver's license. And you are instituting or instilling your right to travel once again. All right? At this point, you're not in their database system because you have surrendered your license in good standing. So, therefore, they have put you on do not um, um, retain list. They will not arrest you. But they may continue piling up fines and warrants. But not if you have surrendered your license in good standing. They'll give you warning tickets because the police obligation is for the corporation as a policy enforcer is to, as we would say, enforce the driver's license. However, if you do not have a driver's license, most of the time they will simply give you a warning ticket. You can actually use your state ID, if you have one, and still maneuver. And still maneuver. Because the same number that's on the ID is the same number that's your driver's license number. But since you have given back your driver's license in good standing, then guess what? They cannot mess with you as the driver's license, under the driver's license. All right, that's another subject, but I wanted to say that. So it says, when you apply for a job, all of that stuff pops up and you cannot get a job. Now you do not need a license any longer and some have chosen to turn theirs in. And the passport is all they hand to the cop when they pulled over. Now, once you get your passport, you can move in that way. No doubt about it. Having a passport give you the ability, that's a state citizen passport that is, have the ability in order to, um, once again, you do not have a driver's license. So you can use a state ID or the passport, which is even better, as we've already gone over about the passport. 
you can use that. Now understand that number one is your nationality card. Your United Washington nationality card. That's the number one form. However, if they need additional form, then you can use your state ID or your passport. In which that will correlate to the same information that's on your nationality ID or card. It says the acceptance of a license in whatever form will not impose upon the licensee an obligation to respect or comply with any provisions of the statute of the statute or with the regulations prescribed that are repugnant to the Constitution of the United States. W.W. Cargill Company versus State of Missouri. I Minnesota, excuse me. So I like that particular um, court case. The acceptance of a license in whatever form would not impose upon the licensee an obligation to respect or compel with any provisions of the statute or with the regulations prescribed that are repugnant to the Constitution of the United States. So any statute that do not correlate to the Constitution, then they are null and void. Null and void. Right here, speeding, running stop signs, traveling without license plates or registration are not threats to the public safety. I'm going to say that again. Speeding, running stop signs, traveling without license plates or reservation or registrations are not threats to the public safety and thus are not arrestable offenses. This is Chrissy versus Elliot. So you turn it in, which is your driver's license to the DMV, get a state ID. In most cases, you can't even have both state ID and driver's license. North Carolina didn't use allow you to do that. Now they do. So by getting a state ID, then you must not have a driver's license in most states. They cannot suspend or put a warrant on a license you do not have. This is why we said that you surrender your license. It said to get an ID or use your passport and your nationality card. In this way, they cannot write you a true ticket. If they do, it's worthless. And they cannot suspend or revoke a license which you no longer have. They can't put child support on you and say, I'm going to take away your license because you no longer have it. <laughs> They can't say that um, they can't um, they can't um, they can take your um, passport. Why? Because you already have it, <laughs> or that you can't get a passport because you already have it. And many, including me, have reported that the letter followed by the nine-digit number on the passport let them buy insurance. So you can buy insurance with the nine-digit number that's on the passport. Escape sale taxes. In other words, make you tax exempt using the passport, the nine numbers on the passport. Buy guns, get an international driver's permit. So you can get an international driver's permit, which we utilize um, the place from out of Hawaii, under the sovereign kingdom of Hawaii. It's called an IDP, International Driver's Permit. That's what we use, too. So for those who are interested in the um, International Driver's Permit, y'all can ask us about that. I and my family at this time have car insurance using only the letters and numbers under the picture on the passport card. Do not give them your social security number or it will link you up with the state driver's license. All right? Most people have found that by using the letter followed by the nine digits on the passport card that their um, um, auto insurance is 20% to 50% cheaper. Mine's is about 25% cheaper. Not all insurance companies will do this. It seems to be about seven out of 10. 
and you cannot do this online. You have to call the insurance company by phone. You cannot get insurance on your car if it is not registered. But then again, if you have the state citizen passport and have turned in your driver's, your life's driver's license um, in for a state ID, then you do not need to buy insurance. And you can call the county assessor and unregister your car or truck. Tell them you no longer have it. All right? This takes your car completely out of their jurisdiction. I will um, leave the plates on so that the police car automatic license plate reader can still read the plate. And there will be less chances of getting pulled over. All right? Now, or get some indigenous plates, which we have our own plates that we ride on. All right? Or you can do something else that we did and put it under your nonprofit religious organization. All right? Now, and for disclosure, I personally have not turned in my license or unregistered any of my cars, but I am never bothered. They know I will put up a fight, and just like any criminal, they will terrify, or they are terrified of an armed victim. I've taken them to task many times, and they have not bothered me in, in about five to so years. But I cannot guarantee that you will not run into some corrupted official. If the judge runs over you, then you and your witness can write an affidavit of high crime and treason committed by whoever the judge, cop, or prosecutor are um, by however many witnesses you have. At least two or more, the better. Make lots of notarized copies and send a complaint to the state attorney general, governor, president, social services, FBI, and etc. If you really want to hurt them, make public record with your circuit or county court rec um, county clerk of records, and then mail out certified copies from the clerk to the aforementioned um, all officials, social services, president, etc. They do not answer any suits that comes your way. Typically, it is stupid for them to sue you if you have at least two witnesses because it now becomes a part of the court record and they must be prosecuted. This ruins their government career forever because it comes up on all background searches. It is also acts as a less pendant lien on all of their property and assets. They will not be able to sell their property or borrow money, but reserve this for how, for how to have to, um, excuse me, but reserve this for have to cases. We only did this because they would not relent. I typically find that the state officials in Arkansas will do nothing to help you. They seem to be the most corrupt. All right. Um, we had to help a sister um, deal with matters in Arkansas. All right. Arkansas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, it, it is some people say that Mississippi is like behind times. No, Arkansas is behind times. So here it is how I helped a friend put the hurt on some corrupt officials in Arkansas. If you want to keep your license and you live in one of these states, then you will write you um they will write you a ticket, then simply show up to court with at least one witness. They will give you two witnesses, including you. The more the better, and your birth certificate. Continue to show your birth certificate and say you are a state citizen. Dismiss the case. Do not get yourself into contempt with the um, corrupt judge. Do not plead. Plead and perfect the jurisdiction of the court. Do not take a plea bargain. Currently, the states I know are Arkansas, Missouri, and Colorado. No other states reports this problem. All right, Virginia. Um, the latter is the mislead officer on why you must have a gun on you. You have your Second Amendment right back. I actually try to educate the officer on citizenship, but their overseer misleads them from the truth. No police officer or other official will confirm that you are on the red flag or restricted list. I don't 
care if you have known the officer personally for 20 years or live next door to him. They will not confirm that this is anything different about your information. They do not confirm anything for me, and they will not for you. All right? Always use the passport for your ID where possible. Some places will give you a hard time by buying a gun, etc. All right? Now, I can tell you um, instances, um, incidences, all right? I've used my United Washington card at the Bank of America to open up a bank account. Okay. As without a driver's license. I've also opened up bank accounts with nothing more than a passport. So you can do it. And that was that Carter um Carter um Trust Bank. I did it with just a passport. But once they run it, they are surprised to find that you can sell that they can sell you one. You can order the passport card, book or both. Matter of fact, I recommend both. If money is an object, I highly recommend that you order the card. Um, I think a passport is only $110. And a little bit more than that nowadays, maybe. All right. Um, your money is an object. If money is an object, I highly recommend that you order the card to carry in your wallet or purse. It's cheaper. When the officer runs your ID, he or she will see your status and has to let you go. The status most law Enforcement C on your background check is similar to the following. Restricted. Do not stop. Do not detain. Do not interrogate. Lifetime concealed weapon permit. Hey, this is what they will see in their computer, in their computer database. Once you perfect this. Once again, restricted. Do not stop. Do not detain. Do not interrogate. Lifetime concealed weapon permit. All right, so this is what happens after you master um, this passport as a non-citizen U.S. national or state citizen, which is American national or American citizen with a capital C status. All right, um, this is why we're talking about that we are American Washington Moors or Mexican Washington Moors. All right, because American states by definition that we are aboriginal copper color natives found here in the americas prior to the conquest or the settlement of our territory by the europeans essentially that's what um the definition states this comes from universal webster um webster universal definition a dictionary 1937 1936 all right so no I do not completely blame the law officers for the action because matter of fact within United Washington we have um, two chiefs who actually was former police officers okay Mikael he was a police officer in San Diego and came into this information. You also have Chief Mosiah Tahuti. All right? From out of Chicago. He was a police in Chicago. All right? We have um, a lawyer who's been a lawyer for over 50 years. And when he started coming to the classes, he said, he said, this is the greatest think tank that he's ever come across. And he said that he's never been privileged. He said, matter of fact, this is what he said. He said, he said if he was younger, he would run with his 100%. <laughs> but now he's like about 75 years old. Right? He said, man, if he was younger, man, he would have run with his. <laughs> but he said he never heard a lot of this information before. And he said it makes so much sense 
he bought my book. And he said he was reading the book while he was taking a shower. That's how much he wanted it to know this information. He was like, God damn. Because this is what, this is, so we have people who are quote unquote professional who's part of, uh, who was part of their so-called system who said, hold up, man. Damn, I knew something was wrong. And they've come to realization. When I got bought before the North Carolina Bar Association, by the time I finished with them, half of the lawyers, DAs, attorneys, judges, magistrates that was part of the Bar Association all agreed with me. Half of them all agreed with me. Now think about that. This is how I also know that this is real. Because I had half of the Bar Association to agree. That, I mean, that's, that's phenomenal. Right. right. So, um, they have been brainwashed by truly evil people in the government, elected officials, the bar association, and banksters. So here we are. So in North Carolina, I had half of the bar association. North Carolina Bar Association to agree with what we was doing and that what we was doing was right in his act. So this is why we, I know we can't stop because hell, I had half of the damn Bar Association to say that we was right in his act. So it's a little unfair to them because they have so badly been misled. But they still have an oath to office, which is the Constitution, so there's no excuse for their behavior. If you are in the law enforcement and reading this, I hope that you look at your oath of office, then the Constitution, and you have sworn to uphold. Dig the answers um, for the answers and educate yourself. And when they did, they said we was right. I have a great respect for the law enforcement that actually protect the people and put their lives on the line for others. But I have no such feeling for those who violate the oath of office. I agree. All cause trouble for people when there is no injured party or damaged property as required by common law. And since North Carolina, it states section, what, section um, 4-1 of North Carolina general statutes, since it states that North Carolina operates under common law, then that's what we have to come to the conclusion on. That if they violate um, the injured party, they violate um, damaged property, and none of this happens with the individual, and they are taking the individual to court, or they're giving um, tickets and bringing people to court, then they violate the common law, they, come, they violated the, um, the Constitution. It says, for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because of, the ex of this exercise of constitutional right. This is Shura versus Collins. So for a crime to exist, there has to be an injured party. If there's no injured party, then there's no crime. So all of this nonsense that we got talking about um, infractions. Infractions don't exist. But what the hell is a goddamn seatbelt violation? What the hell is it you running um, a, a, now I'm not saying that you have to do this, running a stop sign when, it, when there's no cars coming from either way. Of course, common sense would say, well, yeah, you might want to stop just in case. 
But if there's no injured party, see, this is what they have gotten away from. Well, you could have. Well, that's true. You could have, but he did. So, once again, what's the injured party? Matter of fact, if there's any damaged property. Okay, so, um, for the passport, it says found this to be a civil bullet. It is different. Uh, it makes the difference between night and day. Foreclosures are stop cold because they cannot collect debt against a state citizen valued in anything other than gold or silver, coins. But if you are in a non-judicial foreclosure state, it could be a different story. See USA Constitution Article 1, Section 10. Federal uh, Reserve notes are not gold and silver coins. Prison state um, sentences for those out of bond has gone away. All right? Real estate taxes have disappeared. That can go on and on. But experiences do differ throughout the United States, throughout the states of America. All right? Sometimes warrants go away too. Sometimes they do not. But they are supposed to. Anything you have in controversy before you get the state citizen passport may persist afterwards. If it does, you can settle it. Then you are free and clear. See how the passport works for you on small things before you go to bigger things. All right. So order a lot of certified copies of your birth certificate. As we may mention it before, because actually you can use these because these are negotiable instruments. All right. They make sure that you include your certified copy with any correspondence with the government. If you receive letters from any government entity, mail them the birth certificate with a letter telling them to cease and desist. An example of cease and desist is at the end of this thesis, thesis. Do this for every, each and every letter they send you. Always mail it back to the address you got it from, as well as the address they want you to answer. They may send you a letter from a different address later. They have, um, that's how they try and get around it. I have mailed about seven letters before they stopped. Some of the envelopes I didn't even open. I do not let them scare, do not let them scare you. Then they are finished. This goes for any um, government entity. An example cease and desist is at the end here, but we didn't get to it yet. They shall be your reply. This shall be your reply uh, with a, um, oh, he sleep. Oh, he did. Hey, man. Hey, I'll tell you what's to eat. What's up? <laughs> All right. This shall be your reply with a um, birth certificate. All right. To each and every letter you receive from any source or any subject. Should you receive follow up letters, simply send the same thing each and every time. And include a letter, birth certificate. Because it is your proof of your state citizenship. All right? You got it? A lot of folks do not even open the letter. They simply send it back with cease and desist and a birth certificate. Most people have reported um, receiving five to ten letters before they start writing. They cannot do anything, so don't worry. I personally received a letter that said I had 10 days to comply with the request. I laughed out loud and threw it in the trash. Applying with a request, proposal, notice of non-filing, um, offer of settlement, or anything with such wording is not mandatory. And had to do, and that, and um, had they use words like demand, amount, um, due, tax court, I answered with a cease and desist letter with a copy of my passport and the birth certificate and do not let them scare you with any threats. There is nothing they can do to you, government officials, um, 
are not even allowed on your land. Your land is a lodial. So this is what we have to realize too. Since morals are tied to the land when we purchase land or when we come into inheritance or uh, heirs of land, then this is what we have to do. All right? In order to make the land a lodial, we would have to do so by way of being a state citizen. We why? Because uh, what do we call now state citizenship? Uh, that actually is also nationality. All right. Um, I seen um, brothers put like New Yorkian in more because they was born in New York. And they say they are New Yorkian and more. Or uh, New Jersey and more. All right? These are states. And it ties you back to a state in which that you was conceived in, as we would say, um, but you was not born there. All right? Um, so this ties you back into land, making the land a load of you. Um, which is outside of um, the binds and the means in which that uh, the average person who is not a state citizen because they themselves are still property. And as we always say, property can't own property. All right. I did a videotape on that about 13 years ago, if not more, on property. All right. Property cannot own property. All right. Property cannot own property. I did this tape in Chicago, actually, about 13 years ago. Banks and other financial institutions are required to have a customer identification program. Most usually they want your social security number and other forms of ID. However, this does not apply to a state citizen or they use the term non-U.S. person rather than state citizen. A non-U.S. person, state citizen, only has to show their passport. See, um, Title 31 CFR 1020.220, Customer Identification Program for Banks, Saving Associations, Credit Unions, and Certain Non-Federally Regulated Banks for a non-U.S. person or one or more of the following. A taxpayer identification number, passport number, country of issuance, alien identification card number, or number or country of issuance of any other government issued document identifying, or excuse me, um, evidence nationality, or, or any other government issued document evidence nationality. Hold on, we're going to say that one again. <laughs> and country of issuance of any other government issue document evident in nationality. Do you think that your nationality card fits in that? It does. And this is how we was able to open up a bank account with Bank of America by using it. As well as we was able to open up a bank account with the state citizen passport. And it's true. I tried both ways and both ways worked. Or residents and bearing a photograph or similar safeguard. However, you will find the bank employees will be confused and not have a clue about this. So take in a copy of this law with you, including 31 CF, um, CFR 1020.228, um, 220A40, II and Title 42 USC 408A-8, showing that that is a felony to ask for a social security number. Point out that the passport merely say you are a national and not a U.S. citizen. 
if you are not successful, it really doesn't matter if you use your social security number because you are a state citizen. But the bank and or or committing a felony. See Title 42 U.S.C. 48A-8. You may want to make a complaint to the federal prosecutor or other agencies that have jurisdiction, but you can also apply for an EIN number for banking purposes only. Do not give the Social Security number or you will not get it. All right? Well, that's not necessarily true. All right? The reason why, because you have to master commerce. And so you can actually master and put a lien on your Social Security card by doing a non-UCC filing at the county recorder's office or the register of deeds office by utilizing the UCC1 financial statement. Then use the number in lieu of the Social Security number. Okay, you can do that too. Some people have tried to utilize um, the SS4 number. Okay. All right. Before I go to the SS4 number, um, are there any questions from anyone? Did everyone basically understand everything that we was just talking about? I just kept in. Um, I missed it. Okay. So basically, are you saying that the passport goes for a whole lot, like your your right to bear arm? I mean, to buy a firearm, driver's license, and a whole lot of other stuff that you could use it for, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, peace, Ali. Yes, peace. Yes, peace. Yeah, uh, the past, you know, we went over this passport thing before. So, you right. Know, they hold, right. They hold known to my passport because of what the state is saying. Uh, right, 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 right. Yeah. So, is there any other way besides me doing the other process that I did three years ago uh, to send them uh, the State Department and tell them? You know, because I, I did that whole process with the uh, passport and everything. It's just they ain't send me my documents back or the passport. Right, right. Um, um, what you want to do is. I'm still hearing the feedback. Hearing the feedback. You so have to go back you out. Have to go back out. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, all right. Your your case is based off of um, issues dealing with, uh, as we would say, the uh, support, and basically what you can do with that is to have to write the particular agencies. Find out the amount, and you can send your birth certificate, which is a negotiable instrument, which is also a bond for payment up until the age of 18 in the rears. So that would have to be calculated in order to get that, and then you would add, then you would times that 20%. So you can write a um, bill of exchange along with the birth certificate. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about. And send that off to um, the agency. And that should handle that matter. Um, we also will instruct them to send you a letter in which that shows that it's been, that it's been paid. And then you can send that information off to on um, the passport agency in which that that should be able to open up the um, matter um, of the case um, so that you can get your documentation. 
But that's what we just talked about too. That's why we said get multiple copies of your birth certificate because multiple copies will be utilized as forms of payment because it's paper for paper and being that it's the American bank no company, Midwest bank no company, or whatever bank no company there is, you're able to utilize that birth certificate as an actual bond or money for negotiable um, or as a, we would say, a negotiable instrument so that it can be used um, so you can pay off the um, greater debt um, with that. With that. Ali, yes. so when we, copy, when we copy the verses, send them all three copies of the authentication and the state and, and the co- uh, copy of the birth certificate, right? Right. Also with the yeah. 499C, oh, C. which okay. is cancellation of case. Yeah, I just got uh, some in the mail yesterday, uh, the 2020 uh, versions. Okay, just okay. in time. Just in time. Yeah. All right, that's all I got. All right, all right. And of course, you can add a 1040 voucher to that, too. Um, in which that would um, state the payments as you attach it to the bill of exchange slash the um, birth certificate. Dr. Lynn. Yes. All right. Um, I just just to get clarification, I know you said you do nationality uh, paperwork first, then everything follows. Now mm-hmm. all this. All his passport, uh, mm-hmm. social security, all right. is on your name. We're using our appellation name, not our, not not the uh, government. Everything not, uh, is your government everything is your um, appellation name. Okay, okay. want to make sure. Right, everything is your appellation name. Gotcha. All right, when you're doing the SS four, when you're doing the SS five, when you're doing the DS eleven, everything is your is appellation name. So before you get the passport, do you have to um register your documents in the um yes through the um yes okay, okay. Okay. nationality is number one. You can't do nothing that I'm talking about outside of your nationality, or you would be out of bounds and you can't hurt yourself. All right, so you got to register. You have to register your nationality. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Make sure. And they molest us like crazy, don't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah, they did. They did a number. They did search. All right, so here it is, SS4, Application 4, Employer's Identification Number. And notice what it says. For use by employers, corporations, partnerships, trusts, Estates, churches, government agencies, Uh-oh. Indian tribal entities. Uh-oh. Indian tribal entities. Yeah, I saw churches and Indian tribal entities. Uh-oh, exactly. Certain individuals and others. Reese's? So, hmm. Right. Uh, say it again, brother. Uh, uh, we, brother Lisa, initiated. Uh, we would we, we were uh, uh, on the ca- comment on the chat of uh, Abdullah Bay and his other brother. They were talking mm-hmm. about enforcing treaties. And, right. Uh, Arisha called me and let me know what was going on. Just like he initiated, it. so he right. said uh, they, they talking about you know how to enforce these treaty guys. So when I looked at the at the, at the YouTube and I, I saw Dooley and it seemed like he was almost getting ready to cry. Didn't he, Arisha? <laughs> he was getting ready to shout. Arisha, he had shouted. He had shouted so much, so bad. I I had to put. So I said, uh, well, 
for one thing, you need to tie yourself to a tribe. Right. Because, you know, they don't believe in that. No, they don't believe in that. So we said we tied ourselves to a tribe. I said, uh, somebody said, well, a uh, nation is bigger than a tribe. I said, yeah, but the, the, uh, the rights of indigenous people and treaties still apply to tribes. Right. And uh, uh, they had some, a few other people going along with what uh, Reese's and I were saying. And uh, they had blocked one statement I made, you know, about nationality and everything. Uh, but they hurry up and snatch it off the screen. So I don't know what that was about. And they wouldn't let a Reese's statements get through. But a Reese's was trying to put in, you know. Right. I said, oh. I said, I didn't know the, the Dooley and his other brother. I, I, I I know his name, but I, I can't remember it. Right. Well, um, well, hold on. All right, Brother Reaches, tell me what happened. You you seen it, too. Or you seen it. You told Brother L. So, uh, yeah, so what did you get from everything that was said? Uh, nothing, because he really didn't go over the treaties. He didn't go over which treaty was, uh, that they were talking about enforcing. You know, and so I was like, okay, so what treaty, you know, are you enforcing? You know, or what are you going to, what you going to do? You know, just saying you more, you know, and you ain't got nothing backing that up. You're going to hurt people that's listening to the information and don't know where you're coming from. You know, so what tribe? You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people tomorrow. We don't need that. Okay, well, if you say so, then how are you going to be recognized? What treaty are you going to use? You going to use the Treaty of Morocco? You know, or you're going to use the Camp Holmes Treaty. Which treaty are you going to use? It's me. But you ain't specifically stating them. I mean, you want to sit there and say, I'm tired. I've been doing this for 27 years and about to cry. And it's like, yeah, but tell them, you know. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, it's like, you know, like, well, well what, what I noticed that when Dooley speaks about treaties, they're always talking about the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Friendship. Right, right. Are oh, you talking about Abdullah? Yeah, Abdullah. Mosey Abdullah Bay. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, yeah. He'd be going over treaties and stuff a lot. But they're not connected to nothing, are they? No. No. No, they they're 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 called what I call a renegade Moors. Yeah, that's what I was feeling from I don't know why they went around like that with so much intelligence. Yeah, well, I mean that's I mean Taj, you know, um Abdullah Mosey, you know, is like a student of Brother Taj and yeah. You know, and those who are students of Brother Taj, you know, they 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 have their own group, which is known as the Moors of the Round Table, but um, they're not connected to anything except for just saying that they're Moors. But um, many fail to realize that there's Moors in Australia. They're called Aborigines. <laughs> there's Moors in Africa. They're called um, the um, Ebo, the Ashante. <laughs> you know the. Uh, Ethiopians, <laughs> you know, we can go on and on, you know, with the names. Um, I mean, the the yeah. Shante in West Africa, ain't it? yeah, oh, they more, yeah, they more, they more too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I be, I be, you know? I be talking to a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Senegal Moors, yeah, Senegalese Moors, as they are called. Yeah, they, then they got a whole lot of history about the uh, about the Moors when they came over to America 200 yeah. years before Columbus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You Nothing have the Mali. Them. Right, you have the Malian Moors. Yeah, the Malian Moors. Yeah, that's just... who, who, who or the Dogon and the Mandinka. Yeah, the, and I, yeah, I didn't I did, I did, I did read up on them too, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, so no matter where you go, you have Moors, but, but they make Pacific. They tell you specifically where they're located at. You know what I'm saying? They're located where? In what we would call Africa. They will be located in where we will refer to as Australia. Mm-hmm. You know, they will be located in Europe or Asia. You know, we have the Filipino, the Philippines. The Filipino people who refer to themselves as Moros. They're Moors. So they are the Filipino Moors. Right or wrong? Correct. Correct. Right. 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 So, 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 so there's moors all over the planet. So if you're not specifying what more you are located at, then wonder why you get no respect because you're not saying that you are moors specifically here 
with a tribal connection. Right. Now, I got yeah. Taj to tell me, Taj told me that he's Cherokee. Yeah, he be saying that. Yeah. So Taj yeah, is a Cherokee Moor. Wait, it. but Taj, so Taj is a Cherokee Moor. Most of us, most of us on here are Cherokee or Choctaw, which makes us Washita Moors because according to the Wichita um, Treaty, the Treaty of Camp Holmes Treaty, which I call it the Wichita Treaty, um, it states in there all of the nations that was combined to form Wichita, and Cherokee Wichita. is one of them. Choctaw is one of them. Choctaw, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have specified who we are. Then now it, it, for just saying that you are more, that's not specific enough. And that becomes the downfall and the problem for those who are trying to figure out who we are. All right, quick question, Ali. Mm -hmm. I, I had a book called The Slave Community, where it's specified that the Ashanti, Mandingo, Hassa, Fulani, and one more tribe was the ones that started slavery. But did they ever, uh, I understand, you know, where it started, what we did to certain people, but I understand we did. Mm -hmm. Did they ever apologize? Is it anywhere or something that, or they just said, fuck it? No, the people, the, the president of Ghana, Jerry um, Rollins, apologized 20 years ago for slavery. Okay, I've seen that one. I've seen that. Yeah. You know, um, so, uh, yeah, he has. You know, um, so, you know, uh, and of course, you know, that went over people's heads, you know, even then. And uh, many people even, for, many people forget about that fact. So, yeah, there was participation in the slave trade, but most of those slaves were Europeans. Yep, right. exactly. That's, that's what they refer to as the Arab when they talk about the, the Arab, Arab slave trade, trade yep. that actually was the more slave trade. trade. That was the more slave yeah, trade. The North African slave trade, yeah. The wow. slave trade. Mm -hmm. they all think all that tied in with the Atlantic slave trade. All that was all going on, all around the same Right, day. right, exactly. And they got us thinking that it was Arabs, as in, <laughs> as in those light skinned Arabs, over there. Yeah. damn near white. Yeah, and then they try to paint the pictures of the Moors in, in, in Syria. They, I mean, um, in um, in Spain, they tried to paint them white. Yeah. <laughs> they tried to dunk, dunk them and make them like like they was Arab. Yeah. But then you still might find some pictures when you got black Moors with the with the white um Christians well, no. and stuff okay. bowed down and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. But I get what you're saying. All right, yeah, so that right was doing here. the black death, mm -hmm. morning or something like that. What is it called? Yeah, that yeah, that's right what they call it. Or something like that. Yeah, the black plague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the black plague. Yeah, mm -hmm. in Europe, in the more yeah, when twenty-five million um people was killed. Yeah, people died. Yeah, in the more um, um, some say it was the Europeans. The train and the right, and um, and yeah. that the Moors actually did that as a form of genocide, and this is why we now suffer. Um, at their hands as a form of genocide today, as um, in which that we, they have genocidal practices practices against us, such as the yeah. one they get ready to try to do now with this damn um, um, RMD chip shit. Yeah, chip with the corona thing. With the oh, corona thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. But here it is legal name of entity or individual whom the EIN is being requested. Oftentimes, this would be your birth name in all caps. Or the organization, which would be the church, the trust, or the Indian tribal entity. I'll show you what I'm talking about. For well, everybody can have a better understanding, I'm going to show you. Um, hopefully I can pull it up here.
Man, of course, anybody can ask me questions as I'm trying to find it here. We can still talk. All right. Um, what I'm looking for is is the document in which that parallels how to actually write this out. All right. Um, let me see. I printed it off before. Page. Mm, we don't need to put that. Let me see. What else can I put? There's so much information on this computer. Shoot. Ooh, I'm glad I got two terabytes. All right. Um. Mm. All right, here it is. I'm going to pull it up and y'all can see what we worked on for you. This processor. All right, here we go. This is a sample. All right. Sorry, y'all. It's taking a while. But um, I want to show y'all um, how to fill one out properly, individually, as well as also um, dealing with churches or dealing with um, Indian tribal connection, because this is the way in which that we had to do it, because we're not getting anything else. Uh, the Empress told us specifically not to here we go. All right. Can everyone see this? Yes, sir. All right. So yeah. we're going we're gonna to deal with this from the Indian tribal entity and the churches. All right. Notice what is the legal name of the entity? Washington Delivery. Exactly. What is the trade name of the business? Morris Holy Temple of Science of the World, Inc. All right. So the executor or the trustee is myself. Then we gave addresses, mailing address, street address. Notice with the street address, in parentheses is 238 East Andrews Avenue. And then it has city, state, zip code. It has... Henderson, South East Washita, Terra. All right. That's on the right side. On the left side, we have, in parentheses, 
133 South Garnett Street, and then Henderson, North Carolina, in parentheses, the zip code. When you put something in parentheses, it basically means that it's not there, or it was added just for special attention. Then you have county and state where the principal business is located, Vance County, North Carolina State Republic. All right. So here we have name a responsible party is the Morris Holy Temple of Science of the World Incorporated with the EIN number, which is cause North cause the Morris Holy Temple of Science of the World has its own EIN number. All right. Um, in this application, is it a limited liability? No. All right. You don't want it to be a limited liability. All right. Um, is this um, um, yes, if there's limited liability organizers, United States, no. Um, if it's yes, number of LLC members, none actable. All right. You come down and it says type of entity. All right. We went to Indian tribal government. As you see here, that's what was checked. But they asked for only one box to be checked. All right. And then what state is it in? Washington. Foreign country? Morocco of America. We create a trust? Yes, ecclesiastical trust. We come down to 16, ask you what is it that you're doing with this principal business? The work will be basically ecclesiastical. 17, it became principal lines of merchandise, so ecclesiastical. All right. So this is the way in which that we filled it out in order to get our EIN number for United Washington Didak Demonia outside the jurisdiction of cause what is the SS4 form? Anybody knows? Foreign or foreign organization. Yeah, say say that slow slow it down. Say it again. Foreign organization. Exactly. This is to become a foreign organization outside the bounds of the United States. Through their own form. <laughs> so like if you're setting up a business. Right. So, so this would make United Watch, so deduct the money outside the bounds of who? United, United States. States. You got it. Outside of the United States. Exactly. So after you create this any business you own, you use this name and uh, everything else will pop up. All this will pop up. Exactly. Okay. And this we were just you was bringing this up too for talking about bank accounts, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Because come down to line number 10. Reasons for applying go across. What do we see? It says bank, banking purposes or banking purpose. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. It says to, to establish a bank account. <laughs> so. And then you got purchase. Um, going businesses, you got uh -huh. credit and trust. You got right. Um, mm -hmm. it also got purchase going businesses. Yeah, mm -hmm. credit and trust. Mm -hmm. Created the trust, created personal plans. You got everything. Yo, wow, that's it. Yeah. So would you have to fill this out every time you go do some or um do some no, or would you just no, use no, this, this once is... after this period you got it. Once you once you do this one time, you you can carry with Yo, you in documentation. No. That's it. Yeah, yeah, EIN number. Yeah, because the IRS don't get rid of EIN numbers. EIN numbers. Okay. Okay. 
So this is mainly this could be one of the forms you should file. Like once you register, you should file this ASAP. Right. You will file this. Most people would do it individually. Individually. So individually, the legal name will go up top here. The legal name of NC, which is your name in all caps, which is on the birth certificate. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. which is your um, slave name, government name, as they want to refer to it as. Then the trade name, all right, um, um, will also be um, um, the name in caps, if that's what you want to put there. In this part, it says not actable. Mm-hmm. The executor um, of that trade name, name in all caps, would be, of course, up in lowercase or indigenous appellation. Okay. Some people put that the address for the indigenous appellation name would be Canada, China, somewhere like that. I've seen it f- filed out, filled, filled in in um, various ways. Right. Because the trustee is basically the person that's controlling the, 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 the your, your all cap name. You get it. Get it. Get it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so oh, all right, that's, that's the reason to claim so, ownership of your name and all that. Yeah. Right. This is how you claim an ownership of your name. So outside name. of the UCC one financial one statement, which will verify this. You also going it through a SS4 form, which is what is known as a foreign trust 98. Okay. A foreign trust 98 form. That's what a SS4 form is. So it's a trust and that you are made foreign to the jurisdiction of the United States. So you do this for yourself and for your business, which preferably would be a non-profit religious corporation, mm-hmm. not an LLC, because you have to pay taxes on an LLC, but you do not have to pay tax on a non-profit religious corporation. Hey, Dr. Mm-hmm. Dr. And then you can put all your businesses, homes, or houses, cars, underneath oh, oh, oh. that business trust. Under that business trust. Mm-hmm. And when it's under that business trust, then they then all that on the insurance. Something you have to have insurance on your car, that you out, you're foreign. So that wouldn't even apply to you. Essentially, right. Okay. And Dr. Eileen. Yes. Yeah, me and my um friend have a sound engineering business actually, and that could fall up under this too, right? Yes. Okay. So, Dr. Eileen. Yes. Like in my instance too, I you know I trying to do my welding. You know, business as mm-hmm. well as my qigong. So what yeah. I would do, I would use the the wordage that I would use, like I would use like compensation, because when I'm doing contracts right. with someone, if I say that I'm do, I'm gonna build a gate for you, so what I would do in my contracts is use the wording such as, in compensation for doing that gate for you, I will receive uh, three hundred. FRNs, dollars, whatever you want to call it. Yes. How would I yeah. word that? You can word it just like that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's there's nothing wrong with that. Or contribution of three sixty or um or the um offering of the three of three sixty. Okay. Especially if, especially if you do it as a non-profit religious corporation. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So, 
So when you filling this out, every block is not going to have a, a mark or nothing on a check or nothing. Right. No. Because of the way you're filling it out. Right. You don't have to. You don't have to fill out every single um, line. Yeah. The certain Some lines apply to be, certain people. Right. Some things will be non equitable while yeah. others will be lines in which that you will want to state. But these are examples. Okay. Doctor Ali, one more question. What do you say, Brother So you have to put the uh, let's see, the legal, the uh -huh. legal, the legal name. You will have right. To put. The the legal name would be your up and lowercase birth name. No, I'm talking in, in the sense for the church. Uh oh. Um, you, tell you me, knock on, put, knock on the door. They, or you would put they, they, they the name of your church. Okay. Yeah, he was talking to somebody. Open the door, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't need a key. Get queen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, in the legal name of entity, you can put the name... Queen, Queen. Yes, sir. Make, oh, make sure it, um, it don't lock all the way. Okay. Let's see if we can get in. All right. All right. So, um, in the legal name, it would be your upper and lowercase name at birth, um, or you it can be um the name of um as you see here the chapter name or state office name, or um your business name. Yeah, my question, uh, my question was, you have to put Washington did a money church, or you know, sometimes some people will say they no, they no, their you own church. No, you 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 don't have to put that. I was just showing you an example. So okay. most people, when they fill out an SS four form, they would put their own upper and lowercase name at birth. Then the trade name would be the name in all caps. And then the executor administrator, the trustee name would be your indigenous appellation. I was just showing you what we did for um, for the nation as far as United Washington was to um, give us um, a position outside of the bounds of the United States. Okay. All right. I'll show you another example. That way we'll be clear. Because, job, you already did yours. Yeah, I think it's going to be Yeah, I sent, I sent it in. Right. I sent mine in, but uh, I never got a reply from Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, you know, they've been behind since this COVID thing. Yeah, snake arrest. Snake arrest never, um, never contact me back.
Jawab sekali lagi. See y'all can see this tonight. And that's what I mean. Yes. I see on um, lines the 4A, 4B, and 5A and 5B where it says mailing address, street address, city, state. Right. I noticed you put on um, for the mailing address South Garnett and then Henderson, North Carolina, in parentheses, you put the um the zip code or whatever. But then on the street address in the city state, you put East Andrew, and then you put Henderson, Southeast Washita Terra. Right. I was pointed outside the jurisdiction at that time of um, of the United States. That's why mm-hmm. I put Wash. That's why I put um, Washita Terra. I'm going to show you an example because um, I still have for the jobs. The first one that he did that I did for him. Mm-hmm. And um, this also to answer his question too, um, I put up his joint, and let me see. Uh, All right. And um, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. All right. Because normally you have to do a country that is part of the Hague. All right, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Thank 
All right. So this is what we did for Brother Joff. Um, we put Joff Headley and then in parentheses trust. All right. We made we made his birth name a trust. All right. And then the executor of the trust um, is Joff Headley Bay, as you see here. But if you notice, his address that we gave him was in Canada. Because that would make it outside the bounds and part of the Hague country, one of the Hague countries. As long as it's part of one of the Hague countries, you can do that. All right. This is why we specifically said um, Morocco of America. In other words, not Morocco of Africa. All right. If you notice... Um, his address is the address which um, is here um, to the left. This is where he's located at now. But he, as being the executor, Jeff, um, Joff um, Headley Bay, he's in Canada and he's operating his business, which is Joff Headley, which is the trust, which is located in. Maryland. The name of responsible party, once again, is Joff Hatley Bay. If you go to six, you see country and state where principal business is located. That's Canada. You see the uh, social security number, not actionable. All right. We come down to 9A. The one that we checked was, that is a trust. And what type of trust is it? We put foreign trust. Even on other, um, on the other line, we put what? Foreign trust. The state is Regina, the foreign country, Canada. We come down to 10, created a trust. That's what we did and made it what? A foreign grantor trust. All right. What's the purposes? A W-8 purpose only. Was it W-8 W eight or W-8-B-E-N? That makes you foreign. All right. A W A W A B E N makes you foreign to the United States. A W 9 makes you inclusive to the United States, the so called federal government. A W 2, a W 4, all of those things make you inclusive. All right. All right, check one box that best describes the principal activity of your business, which is Joff Hatley Trust Ministry Religious Organization. That's the other. And of course, you go down to the third party desert, um, designee and you see name and um, title, type, print, clearly. Joff Hatley Bay, Executor, Agent in Commerce. Okay, so this is the way in which that we um, filled it out. All right, there's multiple ways to fill it out, but this is just one of the ways that you can fill it out. Right, so once again, normally they're going to ask you for um, a for a uh, 
Hague member, um, country member, all right, or a nation member. That's what they're going to ask you. Canada is part of the Hague, all right. China is part of the Hague. Different countries are part of the Hague. So that's you for a Hague member, and any Hague member in which that is um, that is part, then you will put there. Um, you can utilize. All right. So this is how we did um, Joff Headley making the trust and made it a trust of a foreign trust, we made it a foreign entity to the United States from Canada. Okay, so this is a way to do it. I'm showing you all the various ways in order to do it. Right, you can do one like we did here to establish a bank account, so for banking purposes. So you can use a foreign 98 for banking purposes. You don't have to give them your social security card. This is what we was talking about. All right. So, Dr. Lee, yes. How many nine eight numbers can you get or uh, allowed to have? Um, there's no there's there's no law that I know of, but I mean, even with the uh, with the social security card, you can only get ten in a lifetime. All right, you can only get ten in a lifetime. So, so, I'm, so I'm speculating that you can only probably do ten in a lifetime with an EIN um, EIN number um, also. Right, so I can set up ten different entities. Right. But like so, if you did one with just a name of a business, just a specific name, you can open all your other businesses under that name. So you can use the same IN number, right? Yes, because it's foreign. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you wouldn't have to make a whole other one for another business. Right. And of course you would do that. Um, you would do, um, like for example, um, as you've seen, uh, the Moorish Holy Temple Signs of the World has its own EIN number. However, we're doing business as you can go and go to the Register of Deeds or the County Recorder's Office and do an assumed business name or um, a doing business um, as um, form. And so the Moorish Holy Temple Signs of the World is doing business as Juice and More Vegan Cafe. Or oh, more shorty temple signs of the world is doing business as 144k network or um juice and more you, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. you can do those at the county, you know, many times, but it's all falling under one entity, which is the more shorty temple of science. Yeah, okay. Yeah, got that. Okay. And you're doing that right there at the records, um, at the county recorder's office, which is also known as the Register of Deeds, based on the different counties. But it's either one of those two names that they'll use it, Register of Deeds or County Recorder's Office. All right, so when you go there, you do an assumed business name or you do a dorm business as form um, that you will fill out in which that um, your business will be operating as another entity um, name. Okay. And so I told you all this because the science of doing a foreign 98 is to put your, is to put everything in the trust, but then outside the jurisdiction of the United States. Dr. Lee. Yes. All right. A quick question. I've already established a uh -huh. trust, right? And it has it's more like a consultant. Uh, it's a nine eight. It's a nine eight uh, I E I N. And it's, okay, it so it's a nine eight trust. Yeah. Okay. So my, my question is, I already had that established, and it was labeled as a consultant, consultant business. 
Mm-hmm. Um, can I still come in under that? Go to my county register deeds or county recorder's court office, and if I want to do a do a business as as a Morris, um, yes, yes, I can still do I can still do that. Yes. Okay. All right. I just had that simple question. Mm-hmm. You sure can. All right. <laughs> We'll close it away, God, because it's true. And don't get stuck. We get locked up in oh, here. <laughs> oh, this way. I'm not this way anyway. Oh, you were going to get stuck. You can get me to call Brother Bees or what else? Yeah. I can't hear you. You said it was called Registers of D or what else it might be called? Right, it's called Register of D's or the County Recorder's Office. Or the County of Recorder's County Office. Recorder's Office. Uh, Those are the same places that do the same thing, but they operate under two different names in, in different counties. So you might find it as the Register of D's in one um, county, then you might go to another county. It might be county recorder's office. Uh, All right, is this science coming? Is this becoming a little bit clearer for everybody? Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So once you have the state citizen's passport, do not answer a lawsuit. They cannot even get default judgment against you. If you answer it, then you'll get hurt. I have not heard of one successful lawsuit against a state citizen, and most do not answer. If anyone calls you about anything legal, simply say, I cannot determine who you are over the phone, then hang up. U.S. versus Anthony, 24 Fed 1873 the term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen, capital C, of one of the several states. In that, the form is a special class of citizen created by Congress. So the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. So they created the term resident and citizen, lowercase c, of the United States. But that is not the same as a citizen, capital C, of one of the several states. That's what you become, all right? That's what you become when you do that. Okay? Do you think those guys just got Right? We have in a political system a government of the United States and a government of each of the several states. Each one of these governments is distinct from the other, and each has citizens of its own. So when you, so when they did the 14th Amendment citizen, their attempt was to make you a citizen of Washington D.C., District Columbia. You got everything. Strong system. <laughs> All right, this United States versus um Kushank. All right? Kushank. Right? He was not a citizen of the United States. He was a citizen and voter of the state. One may be a citizen of a state and yet not a citizen of the United States. Uh oh. But see, this is where some of the Moors get confused at. Because there's more saying, well, Prophet Noble Draw League had U.S. citizen, USA citizen on the, um, on the, on, okay, well, that's not a citizen of, that's not a uh, U.S. citizen, citizen of the, of the U.S. U.S.A. means citizen of a state. Not a citizen of the U.S. Two different branches of government. It says that there is a citizenship of the United States 
and citizenship of a state. Tohesho, Tohero versus Jordan. Or Tashiro, Tashiro versus Jordan. All right, so right there it says there's a citizenship of the United States, which some Moors think that they are, because Prophet of Jali has USA on the nationality card. But that's not it. USA, in that case, means citizen of a state. How we know? Because Prophet Nobodrali said he was born in the state of North Carolina in 1886. That is the first damn question in the question yet. <laughs> But one of the first questions. So he was a North Carolinian. Yeah, you can find that slick talk, that slick talk in the Constitution. How they separate, yeah. you can tell two different separate of citizens. Yeah, Amendment 5. But you got it. Yeah. yeah. You yep, exactly. Though. You got to really, really slow. It can't yeah, you have to. You have to. The white folks fall under something different than yeah. the property fall fell under. Right, mm -hmm. right. And see, this is what we have to make the distinction because many Moors are falling under the misconception that they are citizens of the United States. When based on the Dred Scott case decision, we're not citizens of the United States and we'll never be. But according to Judge Curtis, he said that we were citizens in five states at that time period. So that means that we was able to gain state citizenship and yet not be citizens of the United States, just like it says here. In this court case, Tashiro versus Jordan. So people get upset because I say, well, the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. Because they believe that the 14th Amendment made us U.S. citizens. <laughs> no way. It just changed the word from slavery to... Exactly. Uh, to United States citizens. <laughs> exactly. That's all they did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's all they did. So, when you're writing a cease and desist letter, a memo, um, as you see here, private, this is not a public communication. Notice this agent, agent to the principal... Um, notice to the principal, notice is the principal is notice to the agent, application to all successors and assigns from your name, up in lowercase, uh, which is appellation, care of postal service, um, temporary mailing address is what you would want to put, temporary mailing address, USA without USDC, um, zip exempt, but near your zip here. All right, then you put, um, of course, it can be to the IRS headquarters or to the U.S. Department of Treasury or to whomever in which that you write in a cease to desist letter to. More than likely it would be um, somewhere local or somewhere within the state. All right. Of course, this is once again, once you get um, your document um, done as far as your birth, um, as far as your, um, your own passport. All right, and you already have your nationality. You already have your um, authentication process for your birth certificate, title, ownership, and then you do your um, passport. You basically have done what you need to do in order to make you an American national, or as we say, state capital S state capital C citizen, um, as compared to a U.S. citizen which is lowercase citizen, which it gives you um, determination as a 14th Amendment citizen, which makes you a second class citizen. And a second class citizen is no citizenship at all or have little rights. So you will attach what, your birth certificate, number one. It is in fact that I, your name of indigenous, um, indigenous appellation is a natural born state citizen of the state and that is um, com constitutional capacity as one of the several states of the union and I'm an inhabitant thereof. It is a fact that um, my birth certificate is proof that I am a state citizen, a state in which that you was born here 
uh, see attached birth certificate. It is the fact that um, my state citizen, as we would say here in this case, Arkansas has been certified by the United States Department. Right. Um, in fact, it, that I am not a U.S. citizen, resident person, and um, individual, or any other legal fiction, nor have I ever been. Um, and you have it because the Dress Scott case states that you've never been a U.S. citizen, which is a federalized citizen of the District of Columbia. You never have been because the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. So it's right in his act. And see, this is the part in which their morals are missing. They don't know the difference in terminology. So I'm, I'm seeing morals all over Facebook. I'm seeing morals on Twitter. I'm seeing morals all over the place saying these particular things. Instagram, everywhere else with pictures and... And I'm like, y'all missing a point. Missing a point. All right. Based on the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People, as we stated, the only way that you can be a citizen in the state in which that you live is by doing the things in which that we just stated. And that's by transforming yourself into a non citizen um national. A non um uh national non u s excuse me a non citizen u s national or national it's the only way you can do it otherwise we playing right into their hands as far as citizenship is concerned. We might as well just have the terms or labels negro black and colored. This is the way so that we can get out of this all right. So it says that the U.S. Um, with intent, great deception, used the term United States citizen to deprive the people of their rights, their birthrights, their property, and freedom, and further to regulate, um, the regulate, or regulate, excuse me, relegate the status of the person to that of livestock, or as we would say, chattel property, which the word chattel is the French beautiful word for cattle. Chattel. See, when you say chattel, you don't think, gee, that's some smooth shit, ain't it? <laughs> chattel. <laughs> you know, chattel. <laughs> you ain't thinking of cattle. <laughs> but it's a beautiful French word, and it means cattle, means property. They know how to play with the word. Oh, yeah, they know, it was beautiful, isn't it? Chattel. You think of chattel, you be thinking, uh, oh, oh, man, give me a glass of that chattel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You thinking of wine? <laughs> the cop is fucking us over. <laughs> right, right. Or oh, a oh, car or oh, yeah, oh, a beautiful yeah. house was, you know, on a lake or something, man, that's the beautiful chattel. You know what I'm saying? But it's cattle. <laughs> they slick with this shit. <laughs> so I owe you nothing, nor do I have any, nor do you have any jurisdiction over me. You constant unceasing letters from you and your satellite departments that harass, threaten, attempt at coerce, scare tactics, stalking, and other actions, and depriving me of our rights to tranquility guaranteed by the preamble of and the rest of the Constitution for the United States of America. You are violating the RICO laws, stalking laws, depriving rights under the color of law, as well as the common law and the Constitution. Your actions are also acts of treason and treachery. I order you to cease and desist all activity against me. So this is how you write a beautiful cease and desist, desist letter. All right? This is how. All right? And this is what I'm talking about here. Um, as you see here on some of the nationality cards since 1934, it says, I am a citizen of the U.S or U dot S dot A dot USA. All right. So this is your nationality and identification card for the Moorish Science Temple of America and birthright for the Moorish Americans, etc. We honor all the divine prophets, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius. May the blessings of the God of our Father Allah be upon you that carry this card. I do hereby declare that you are a Muslim under the divine laws of the Holy Quran of Mecca, love, true peace, freedom, and justice. I am a citizen of the United States of America. All right. Once again, as we figured out from what we've just read, a citizen in what way? Only as a non-citizen U.S. national. 
or what is known as an American citizen, capital C. That is the only way possible. Otherwise, there's no way for you to be a U.S. citizen, which is a 14th Amendment citizen, all right? There's no way. Just got case law states otherwise. So you're not a citizen, nor will you ever be. And we have to realize that in that sense. Who wants to be a federalized citizen to begin with? The problem is this, is that people don't know the difference. So um, being a federalized citizen is no different than being a so-called Indian on a reservation. They're federalized. This is why you get the shittiest water Flint, Michigan, just like on the reservations. This is why we allow them to label us, and we can't allow that any longer. And the best way that we can figure this information out is through their own forms, because they have to leave a loophole. Why? Because you're messing with Masonic Shriners. This is, the, this is, the, this is the Wizard of Oz. You're in the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's. They're federally, they're federally recognized, Arlene. Yeah, they're federally recognized, just like we're federally recognized citizens of Washington, D.C. Yeah, exactly. Both are federalized. <laughs> 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 Ain't no different. So then we figure out. Man, why they damn can come up in our house and take our children? Or oh, man, why they can go and shop? That's why. <laughs> we want to be federalized. I be I be saying this to so many people, and they be acting like they don't understand. It's common sense. You don't have no right over your own child. Right. You can lose your own child for a, a nick bag of weed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Take your car. You, you don't own nothing. Yep. Run all in your house. Do anything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, some people like being house niggas. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that they lost. They don't know no other way. They don't know nothing different. Nah, nothing some people, <laughs> you, tell, you tell them and then they'll say, well, I mean, you know, life ain't so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. They, they Until like they, they go through something. Yeah, they like their position, man. They really do. Until they... I, I, I'm still trying to figure out why they ain't. Breonna Taylor was prime example. They didn't just say, oh, yeah, we had it. We not. They just lying like a mountain. If, we was, if, if, if the situation was reversed and it was one of us, it would be a whole different story. Because now they got to they gotta go to court. They ready to go to jail. They, they done messed all the way up. They done broke all treaties. They done just, now it's all hell ready to break loose for them. So it would be a different status. It would be a whole different situation. They'll keep that under the table. They don't want nobody to know because it's going to go down a whole lot different. And they don't want nobody to find out how it went down because then everybody's going to be like, well, how that happened? You know, they actually had a brother who was um, a fez where himself, he was a temple member, though. But uh-huh. how that happen um, where he, I forgot the situation, but they was looking into it and then investigating and trying to get some justice for him. But, you know, he a temple member, so he ain't exactly, they, oh, they yeah. in that religion type of aspect of it, not necessarily yeah. the legality. Oh, you talking about the um, young brother? Um, I think his name is Ball, um, who um, died in Missouri. I Thank believe so. Missouri. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, I know him. But he was a temp- yeah. he was a, what they call Temple Moore. Right. right. He was he wasn't nationalized. Right. Exactly. Okay, that's what you be talking about, Bay, as far as being more science temple, and then right. doing this is different. They right. think that this, they're saying they uh, are more right. American. And that'll do it, you know. No, no, it doesn't work that way. You know? No, no. Now, in 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 some cases, that's fine. However, when dealing with this system, which we're still in. And we have integrated into, this is the burning building that Martin Luther the King brought us into, that he was talking about, that he told Harry, um, Harry Belafonte that he was worried about. Shit, I'm worried about the shit too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Coming to find out that he brought us into this damn burning building. 
So now that we're in the burning building, how we get out of it as it burns down around us? That's what we have to be concerned about. That's what we have to come to the conclusion of and have answers for ourselves and for our people. All right? This is why they put all these privileges before us, all these permits, all these licenses. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a medical cannabis identification, a weapon carry license. You have to have a dog license. You know what I'm saying? Why, why, it's, all, why it's all legal for them to do it, but you got to get a license to do it. Right. You have to that have a hunting. Yeah, you have to have a hunting and fishing license. But it's see, no... Yeah, according to Murdoch versus Pennsylvania, 319 United States 105, it says, no state shall convert a liberty into a license and charge a fee thereof. If the state converts a right, which is a liberty, into a privilege, the citizen can ignore the license and fee and engage in the right liberty with impunity. So that means you don't have to listen to anything concerning a license. That includes a driver's license, which the state converted into a privilege, taking away your rights. Uh, they can do that to a, a U.S. citizen. <laughs> Right. Well, this is why I put this over here on the left-hand side. Whatever you believe will be true, not because it is, because you believe or imagine it to be. There can be no truth in illusion, for truth has no illusion. Infinity love is only true. Everything else is illusion. When the world wakes up to and sees that all power resides in the individual as being absolute sacred, we will all be free. Nobody has any more or less power than anyone else, and that is what they don't want you to believe. Law is an illusion when no one can prove where they get their authority over others from. Law are only created to support illusions. So, the judge, we accept the ruling of the judge. You ain't got to accept his ruling. I've done it many a times. If I ain't like the judge ruling, I say, um, Your Honor, um, I object um, to your decision, and I want to take this to a higher court. Get to print my paper. <laughs> I've done it too many times over the 30 years. I don't like the decision. I want to um, object to your ruling. Almost sounds simple, really. You know, it is simple. I object to your ruling. That, that's as simple as you can get. And and he'll look and say duly noted or whatever he'll say, and, and the clerk will um write it down, and then the clerk will um actually have to move the case up to the superior court from out of the rinky dink kangaroo court that they have you playing at with no stenographer. See, when you get a stenographer, then then you can really talk some shit. That's when you can say these laws. Oh, look, the state can't convert a, um, a liberty into a license and then charge for it. Murder versus um, Pennsylvania. Oh, well, the state of North, give me a North Carolina state law. Uh, I don't have to because based on Star Isis, that law from Pennsylvania is just as good as if it was a law in North Carolina. Yeah, I hate when they play that game. Yeah. But see, that's the trick. See, this is how they take you off your... But see, when you know about Star the Isis, they, they shut up. Oh, so you violating Star the Isis? Then that means that you would be violating my um due, um due process of law. And your honor, are you teaching law from the bench? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, 
And for people who still don't understand the citizenship thing, it is according to the Law Dictionary of Legal Terminology. The Law Dictionary of Legal Terminology. Look at number three. All natives are not citizens of the United States. The descendants of the Aborigines, oh shit, and those of African origin are not entitled to the rights of citizens. Interior to the adoption of the Constitution of the United States. Each state has the right to make citizens of such persons as it pleases. As it pleased. So, you're not a citizen of the United States, and that's fine. But states can make you citizens, whether you're Aborigine or one of African origin. That's what it just said. That constitution does not authorize any but white persons to become citizens of the United States. Uh-oh. So only white people can become federalized. <laughs> oh, told a lot. <laughs> oh, told a lot on them. It says, remember, what did it just say? That constitution does not authorize any but white persons to become citizens of the United States. It didn't say of the United States of America. It didn't say of the, hold up, let, let's go back up for so we can get an overstanding here. Here it is. That there is a citizenship of the United States, uh-oh, and citizenship of a state. He was not a citizen of the United States. He was a citizen and voter of the state. One may be a citizen of a state and not yet a citizen of the United States. Wow. Can, can it become any clearer, y'all? Nope. So Aborigines, those that mean uh, those who was already here and those of African origin, about 15% of our ancestry, the Aborigines is 85% of our ancestry, are not entitled to the rights of citizens. Interior to the adoption of the Constitution of the United States. Each state, however, has the right to make citizens. And remember, Judge Curtis said we were citizens in five states before the Dred Scott case decision of Judge Chan. As it pleased, that Constitution does not authorize any but white persons to become citizens of the United States. It didn't say the United States of America or state citizen or citizen of the state. It says citizen of the United States, which is the same difference that we just made earlier that we just read. That still stands today as you speak, Dr. Ali. Yeah. Yeah. Still stands. So it says, and it must therefore be presumed that no one is a citizen who is not white. <laughs> I tell you that's a black law dictionary. Yeah. So exactly. the only one that can be born into it is if they are white born right. over here. That was, I always looked at that joke in that constitution. I'm like, what you mean born into it? How can you be born into United States? <laughs> is it gonna be born in one state? Like, what are you saying? That it's okay now. They some of the white people. No, I'll be that white person. Right, right. It was right. a young girl. What person. was the right. young girl? Right. What was the young free girl? Free white persons. Um, free white persons are citizens of the several states. Yeah. What was the name of the, of the of the young girl? She was um she was over here. She was she was like twelve, and she um she she was supposed to be like the richest young um African American over here, and mm -hmm. they labeled her as a white girl because she had so much money. But she wasn't a citizen. She was a indigenous person. Her family and it was indigenous. They was Aboriginal. Right. I forgot her name. You talking about Sarah? Is that her name? I think that might be. I think that's what you talking about. Yeah, she was the youngest girl. They labeled her white because she had so much money. Well, I didn't know they labeled her white. Yeah, I, 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 I can find it. I can find it. Yeah, because free white person 
is a status. It doesn't have anything yeah. to do with complexion. Yep, exactly. Because that's what they labeled us. She was a right. white, she labeled a white, free white person. Who right. Because status, she had so much money. Right. Well, this is how we know that U.S. citizens are property of the U.S., but natural persons are signatory. Yeah, I think I'm getting that. Sarah Go ahead. Rector. Okay. I think, yeah, Sarah Rector. I think she was the Muskogee Indian. Yeah. So when we read the issue of sovereignty and citizenship is most strongly addressed and evident in this profound case law. The Dress Scott case, 1854 to 1857. The United States Supreme Court clarified all issues of citizenship and sovereignty in relation to the United States of America concerning not only Dred Scott, but anyone of African descent. The court further addressed a person lacking of ability to make a lawsuit not in their proper person or not in proper persona. The Dred Scott case of 1857 is the most important and far-reaching slave case ever to come before the Supreme Court of the United States of America. It settled all arguments regarding people called Negro, Black, African, etc. The decision was that, there are not, that they are not and will never be citizens of the United States of America. That case as the law of the land that stands as the law of the land and has never changed. Question. If the man called, him, called himself Dred Scott, who claimed to be a free man, why would he still transact in business in law issues in the alien European surname? Scott. Which constitutes fraud? What alternative did the Supreme Court have but to rule in favor of Stanford, the European, who can certainly was in his proper person and a citizen of the United States of America. All right? Do we react to social emotions or do we examine the facts? So, since we are not U.S. citizens, hence we are not property of the U.S. That means we can go out and do what the hell we need to do for our goddamn selves. All this goddamn integration shit was something that we got fooled into by Martin Luther the King in the goddamn 60s. And we shouldn't have never gone with it. That's just what it is. But as you notice, what's up, man? Huh? Got your, got your little Buddha knife? I got your little Buddha knife today. Huh? Same with that. Huh? So that's a little Buddha knife. I got a little Buddha up here with the little knife on his head. That's you looking like this. Hey, she looking like him, yo. You know that? Look. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, natural person, which are, now if you look up the definition of natural persons in the Black Soul Dictionary, 7th edition, it says natural persons, the first word used is indigenous. Indigenous. So, natural persons, indigenous, People are the signatories. Today, on the public side, all obligations are, in fact, U.S. obligations. All right? So, here it is. The U.S. citizen. Citizen of the District of Columbia. Come on, Columbia. Yeah, that part. Residing in one of the states of the Union... <laughs> are classified as property and franchises of the federal government as a individual entity. This is Will and Steel Corps versus Fox. So, if you allow for yourself to be called a U.S. citizen, the slower KC, regardless if you reside in one of the states of the Union, you're classified as property and is franchised. A franchise of the federal government. Hence federalized, as I keep saying. It's right there. So, Dress Guy case. The case in which the United States... 
Supreme Court held that the descendants of Africans who were imported into this country and sold as slaves were not included nor intended to be included under the word citizens in the Constitution, whether emancipated or not, and remained without rights and privileges except such as those which the government might grant them. Right? So this is what we keep seeing over and over again. It's talking of the Dred Scott case, which leads us that black people are dead in the view of the law. Civilist Mortus, typically dead, dead in the view of the law, the condition of one who has lost his, his civil rights, capacity, and an account dead in law. This is why Huckabee can come and claim black people aren't technically citizens during a critique of unjust laws. Huckabee said it. Now, Huckabee ran for president, all right, two terms ago. It was under um, Barack Obama. I think it was his first um, term. So Huckabee claims that black people aren't technically citizens. And so the news media tried to get at him, but he already gave up the truth. Oh, MSNBC's Negro Blacks and Colleagues. <laughs> Harris Perry, Blacks still not seen as American citizens. Refugees in America. So Blacks still not seen as American citizens? And notice it's a capital C. <laughs> See, they're trying to tell you. Only way to do so is by first becoming land. Understanding that we are Moors, as we read earlier. And that there was Moors that was here. Look at this. The Lenny Lenape people was known as the Delaware Moors. Every American knows that his country is a very big one and that what he calls the American people is a conglomeration of nearly every race and nation on the face of the earth. But he seldom realizes that in hundreds of places scattered here and there all over the land that there are to be found hundreds of colonies of colonies of peculiar races, families or tribes, many of which was planted long before the evolution that they had preserved through many decades the habits, peculiarities of mind and physiques, often does every language of their ancestors. And this is talking about the Lenny Lenape. The Lenny Lenape. So see, this is where we messed up at because we're using their terminology. So he says, my father and mother and all of my four parents were Indians. No, they was Moors. All right. This is why it's called Kent County Moors. So why is he using the term Indian? Okay, why? See, this is the problem. This is why John Henry Clark told us we are people searching for nationality. A name of a people must relate them instantaneously to land, history, and culture. And when we think instantaneously to land, you think of nationality. So, when we looked up the word land, the word more is embedded inside of the definition. Therefore, you can't get more instantaneously than that, can you? Meaning that more oh. and land are synonymous, that they are interchangeable. If I say more, then I'm talking about land. Hence, you are. So when we look at the definition of land according to the Black's Law, we see that the word more is embedded inside the definition. Land is the foundation of nationality. And the name more symbolizes the birth tie, birthright ties, which is called um, the just sanquisne, or heritage, the just solely. In international law, Negro, Black, and Colored in the said United States corporate, corporation are listed as stateless, i.e. landless. Or are we? According to law, air land cannot be sold. So we still are who our foremothers and forefathers are. 
a word, and that's Moors. In this manner, heritage Josoli is the equivalent to the Blasphemous Dictionary for Floor Edition um, land. All right? Um, when you look up the word stateless, Blasphemous Dictionary 2nd Edition, it says stateless, without a state or political community, destituted of state and ceremonial dignity. Interestingly, the opposite of nationality, I mean, of stateless, is nationality. Is that a coincidence? So, so if stateless is opposite to nationality, and when we look up nationality, and how we looked up the word more, as nationality takes us back into um, into more, because land is the foundation for nationality, and then the word more is embedded inside the definition, then that makes us no longer stateless or landless. For we have now taken back the land, which is our physical bodies, and our tie to the planet Earth, which is what the Queen Mother was doing with this petition. And if you haven't signed the petition, it's on our website. Please do so. I done it. Okay. All right, so right here, in international law, a stateless person is someone who is not considered as a national by any state under the operation of its laws. Hmm. So, by doing your passport, that puts you back also as a state citizen, capital C, therefore you're no longer white. Stateless. So proclamation or reclamation is to help establish one's nationality, a connection to an actual nation and landmass. There are Negroes and Europeans, I'll be honest, that strive to keep us in NBC, Negro, Black, and Colored status, i.e. denationalized, stateless, and landless. And if you are not part of the nation, you do not come under national and international law. This is the problem that I have with the Moors who just running around doing whatever the hell they're going to do. Rogue Moors, as I call it. The word more or more, more nationality issues is a threat to slaveholders and their Negro breed, overseers alike. Prophet Nobudrali stated, come and link yourselves with the family of nations. The family of nations went by the law of nations or the principles of the law of nature applied to the conduct and affairs of nations and sovereigns from the new edition. All right, you can read that from, from Joseph Chetty. All right, Esquire, Barrister at Law. Good night. Peace, peace, guys. So the law of nations is the private international law between sovereign individuals. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We got to read this right here. Slow it down. The law of nations is the private international law between sovereign individuals, families, tribes, um, um, courts, grand juries, townships, counties, states, and nations. This has been well established under various international conventions for thousands of years. All the administrative rules and regulations, statutes, and the uniform commercial codes and constitutions of various countries are based ultimately on the organic law of nations. The law of nations is the law of sovereigns, derived from the principles of natural law. It is from the law of nations that constitutions are created and lawful de jure governments consummated. Any government that purports to hold power and will authority without being questionable to the laws or de facto. And this is why the United States Corporation is a de facto government. The lawful government ruling by occupation, assertion, and exploitation. This is what this government is doing. De facto governments justify their existence by the rule of force and coerce instead of the rule of law. 
Do I need to change them? I hate them. Okay. All right, so right here, as we were saying. The facto government justified the existence by the rule of force and coerce instead of rule of law. It is important to know that sovereignty does not stand on its own. It is deprived or derived, excuse me, from your nationality. All right? Being part of a nation as it is part of your substantive right and is distinguishable, i.e. unalienable or inalienable right civil rights, and political rights, right? Your indigenous rights and aboriginal rights also. So notice what we just read here. And if you have never read the laws of nations, you need to read the laws of nations, all right? If you write me, I can send you um, the PDF of the laws of nations, all right? Email me and I can get you those um, documents, or you can find them possibly online, all right? But the laws, the law of nations, you need that so you can understand how nations were formed, all right? Um, how, please God, and how we have our nation formed, which is based on nature or the nature, all right? And who's the nature? The nature of the gods, all right? We know what they've done. They took millions of land, millions of acres of land from us. Right here, Mississippi, white man kills black minister and steal over 270 acres of land. They did this everywhere. This is when you were seeing people um, castrated and lynched, murdered, because they still in land. It wasn't just because they was mad at a nigga. They were still in land. Nationality. That quality or characteristic must arise from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or state. Nation or state. Nationality determines the political status of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance, while domicile determines his civil status. National, um, nationality arises either by birth or by naturalization. You never had to be naturalized because you're not artificial. Only something artificial has to be naturalized. According to the Sovereignty, sovereignty um, nationality is also used as opposed to territoriality. All right? Territory. For the purpose of distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory. The Jews didn't have a territory, so they went into Uganda first. The blacks in Uganda kicked their asses out. Then they went into Palestine and then started wars with the Palestinians and now created the state called Israel. They didn't even have any territory. And that's an artificial state, isn't it? Uh... Yeah, it's de facto, but it's there. And the United States government gives them millions of dollars, billions of dollars annually to be the spy for them on the Middle East and Africa. And Africa. That Mossad. Right. The Israeli Mossad are the spies in which that works and operates for the Vatican via the um, London uh, Queen. Um, Queenery and the United States. So nationality determines the political status of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance, while domicile determines his civil status. This is why Nobu Ali said 
through sin and disobedience, every nation has suffered slavery due to the fact they honored not the creed and principles of their forefathers and foremothers. This is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them and the word Negro, Black, and Color was given to the Asiatics of America who was, who are of Moorish descent because they honored not the principles of their mother and fathers and strayed away or strayed after the gods of European or Europe in whom they knew nothing. And you still see Negroes now running after white Jesus. So because they run after white Jesus, nothing matters as far as your ancestors concern, of your ancestry um, being concerned. Um, nationalities don't concern because all you can think about is white Jesus. Okay. White Jesus got it for me. Here, white Jesus, take the will. <laughs> This is what's going on. Genesis 126, 127, 128, in conjunction with question 22 and 23 from 101, I affirm my divine and national status as a lineal descent of those divine beings manifest in flesh on the sixth day of creation, Aboriginal Architonic Moors. On this subject of Aboriginal status protected by the First Amendment of the American Republic Constitution, I want to emphasize that the word ab in aboriginal from my research, aboriginal um, ab from an original first uh, um, original aboriginal people are the first inhabitants of a country, all right, reference source of natural law, Webster 1936 Underbridge Dictionary, page 5. The ancient Egyptians, Moors, called their mother heart principle, which unified all things, the Ab. This Egyptian Illinois concept of the Ab includes not only the soul given each individual by his or her own mother's heart, but also the hidden heart of the universe. Reference book, Ancient um, Future by Wayne Chandler, page 143. Ab in Hebrew and Arabic and the rest of the Semitic languages means father. For lessons on the mother-father reference being the process of creation. Read Secret Teachings of John. All right, so. Know your nation. As stated in the laws of nation, without knowledge, the nation will act at random. This is why I teach so much information, because we're trying to form a nation and we're not trying to uh, work at random, act at random. And often take the most improper measures when people do not know their nation's history or knowledge, all right, it cannot make a successful endeavor with this in mind, all right? So we have to get back the knowledge um, to our people, all right? Yeah. And this is to all of our people here, you know, uh, not just, you know, uh, um, one Moorish group because what I know is that all the Moors have to mention Washington because the Washington are the only ones who can actually prove actual land rights. Yeah, I noticed that too. They, even the elders, they always mention Washington. Right. So why would I be part of your group necessarily when I can go straight to the source? Exactly. Why would I be part of your group when we're going to have to mention the Washita that I just left? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that bingo? Thank you. That that doesn't make any sense to me. So when, so when Crown Prince Hutan Tupac Bey came to me, um, I met him in 95. But when he came to me in 2002 with the idea that he was going to form United Washita, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect, you know. I was just simply thinking at the time that I'm into my spiritual thing. I really don't want to deal with politics. But he was like, no, Eileen, you need to be part of this. Um, you know, you've been with me for years, basically nine years. You know, I taught you, so, you know, I need for you to, you know, to, you know, to grab a hold of this before we can do this. I eventually said, okay, I'll do it. But even at that time, I was like, okay, I don't know. Uh, 
we were going to do 2003 um, I got made to be the chief of information and propagandism but in particular of information so he had the minister of education who was Ravana Bay for the Empress to come down to North Carolina um, to my old bookstore which was cultural freedom in Fayetteville, North Carolina and he came um, with a stack and stack and stack of papers, all right, in which that was given to me. Some of the um, papers I was able to, most of the papers I was able to save. Um, a lot of the papers are in the book, First World Order. Some of the um, papers got destroyed because of the flood. Some of the papers I was able to make, um, scan copies of and get them on the computer anyway majority of it. So I still got the majority of the information that was brought to me by um, Ravana, the Minister of Education for the Empress in the Empire Washington, D. Dr. Munya. All right, so like I said, the majority of that information um, is in the First World Order book. So that was the plan, was to put it in written form because for whatever reason, these jokers was hiding the goddamn information and act like it was a goddamn Masonic secret. And I'm like, no, this is not going to happen. Not on my watch. Heard that. And this is how they was acting. They was acting like, oh, no, you can't show this. You can't. Oh, you're putting out too much knowledge now. Oh, no, nigga. <laughs> I'm, like, oh, I'm like, damn, you're sounding like damn slaves up in this piece. Yeah, it sounds like a, a, a paternal order. Like like, damn, damn house, niggas, house niggas up in here. I'm like, I don't like yeah. that. So I said, um, so Prince Bay um, basically dedicated, you know, to me that I need to write a book. So that was, I was already had a book written, which was out of the womb and in the mind. So I put that on the back burner, which, which I still haven't gotten any recorded yet. And that shit was back in damn 2000. All right. Um, but I put that to the side and get on um, the first world order published. All right. Because Prince Bay said, look, we need to get the book. So I took what Ravana gave me, took the information that Prince Bay gave me, and I put it in the book. You know? And people, you know, they have to decide on where they want to stand. Because right here, as we see in here, according to the United States Supreme Act of State, to wit, every sovereign state, people, is bound to respect the independence of every other sovereign state people and the court of one country people will not sit in judgment of the act of government of another done within the same or his own territory so see this is the problem that we're having with the court system in the so-called united states when only thing we have to do is activate our own court system our own law firm our own embassy This is why we're pushing now in order to do so because it's going to be a necessity as you would see as this shit continue going down the drain. Yep. All right? So right here, the Empress wrote, and this is why we got her signature on it, she wrote, one nation cannot make laws in another nation. One nation cannot make law on another nation's land. One nation cannot steal and sell another's Nations or um, ancestral artifacts and property, then flood these sacred places on indigenous people land that has always belonged to their ancient ones, which is protected by treaty signed by protectors. This is what the empress wrote. So they cannot continue making laws here. <clears throat> Especially not statute codes, rules, regulations, ordinances, policies, and um, they can't keep doing that. We have to begin to start making the laws once again. And this is what that Masonic Shriner meant by, um, hopefully, you know, the Moors, y'all still here? Hopefully, you know, y'all can help us with some of the things that is taking place in the world today. Yeah, we're going to help, all right. 
He right. We gonna help all right. So it's no coincidence that according to the Department of Defense, when you get to Executive Order eleven four nine zero, October the nineteenth, nineteen sixty nine, which is known as the King Alfred Plan, also known as Rex eighty four plan, because in nineteen eighty four, um, Ronald Wilson Reagan signed um, the Rex eighty four plan. Um, which is all talking about quiet, um, silent weapons for a quiet war. And this is what they said at the department um, or the Joint Chief of Staff um, that there would be many cities where the minority, and they call us the minority, look up the word minority, please, in the Black Spell Dictionary. Somebody look up minority, please. And a good Mm hmm. Somebody read minority for me, please. Minority? Mm -hmm. The state or condition of being a minor, infancy, the smaller number of votes of a deliberative assembly, Opposed to the majority. The state of condition of being a minor. So a minor says an infant or person who is under the age of legal competence, one under 21, a term derived from civil law which describes a person under a certain age as less than so many years. And on the bottom here it says also less, of less consideration, lower, a person of inscription condition. Mm. And, and y'all want to continue being that? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Easy as one, two, three. Amen. One, two, three. It, 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 it yeah. means more. It's more to it, too. To that yeah. Word. It's more to it. I no, think yeah, it's like um, um, minority is um, individuals that are not a part of the um, the, the supreme power. They're like mm. they're they're under the um they're under control of a of a of people in control of them and they're not a part mm. of that corporation. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah, that, that word deep. <laughs> oh yeah, that word deep. Because it also <laughs> means immature. So uh-huh. that just infantile means someone who's immature. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, minor always mean lesser, and I'm always want to be more. Exactly. <laughs> there we go. That's why we more. Because you always want to be more. <laughs> there will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the streets a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy for he is bound to the continent by heritage and knows that no political asylum will not be able to be available to him in any in other countries. The greatest concentration of the minorities in the, is in the deep south, the eastern seaboard, the Great Lake region, and the west coast. So when we look up heritage, because it says that we are bound to this continent by heritage. Look up heritage. What heritage say? It says air. The word heritage Root is air, in air. So we heirs to this yeah. continent? How yeah. can we be heirs to this continent if they just bought all of our assets from Africa? <laughs> <laughs> can't be. You can't be. Maybe he, maybe he just used the, maybe he mis, 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 misused the word heritage. But what it says, property that is and can be inherited. Something handed down from one ancestors or the past as a characteristic, a culture, tradition, etc. What is it? The rights, burdens, or status resulting from being born in a certain time or place. Birthright. So when Taj is always talking about your birthright, your birthright, death, death, birthright, you're talking about your heritage. In other words, you being the heir, because remember, heir land cannot be stuck, cannot be sold. So here it is. You have 
the land of the Washita. Miss Nomit, Louisiana Purchase. Because we know, according to the Empress, it was never purchased. In which that goes into an estimate of over 30 million acres. Washita Moors, Washita Land. Man. You got it. You got it. Because remember, more and land are synonymous, interchangeable. Yep. So, Washita Land is the Washita Moors. So, this is why they're so afraid that you have now identified with being not just Moors, but also more concretely Washita. Because that's your heritage. That's your birthright. In the Bible, the Bible, the chosen people of God, Israelites, that's heritage. So remember, the Moors are also who? Israelites. <laughs> mm-hmm. In fact, the word Washita is Septu. The word Septu is where we get the word Shabazz from that the nation Islam utilizes. So when they called them the tribe of Shabazz, that's the tribe, that's the Washita tribe. <laughs> yep. And they don't know. Similarities. Yeah. I told somebody, I said, man, a every and a more is the same thing. Same that's how thing. you say Hebrew in Hebrew. If, you got it. A uh, every and a more is the same thing. I be telling them that all the time. All and the time. Don't comprehend. No, they don't. They keep saying we Negroes. <laughs> well, they, they can be that. I said what? Everybody have the right to be that. You said, yeah, we the ones that call the Negroes. I said, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. We ain't ham, we, we ain't this, we ain't that, we Negro. Man, all right, okay, you're not African, you ain't nothing, you just a Negro. All right. right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So this well, is what we found out. The Negro here in America is. Mm-hmm. Uh... So why is proclaiming our nationality important? When you naturalize, you lose your nationality. Because to naturalize is a corporate act. Although nationality can arise, be arise by nationality, by nationalization, excuse me, it must be understood that nationality arises only by birth of natural persons. The naturalization process is used to adopt Alien individuals, in other words, artificial persons, who do not have a nationality, which implies an unnatural goodbye must be granted one, hence naturalized. For more to naturalize would only imply a condition of not having a nationality. Our nationality was buried among clergymen and now under Freemasonry, as I spoke about earlier. It can never be acquired because it already exists within our bloodstream. Because you are, as your ancient forefathers and foremothers were, Moorish Americans. We must reclaim it. Nationalization is a term we use to signify the process of reclaiming our nationality in order to avoid the limitations of being naturalized. Oh, and by the way, nature can never be naturalized. So remember, natural person is indigenous. Natural person means indigenous. This is why everyone has the right to a nationality, according to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All right? We see it over and over again. This is the difference between a de jure government and a de facto government. And the facto government used all these apparent facts, a government of fact, right? A government actually exercising power and control as opposed to true and lawful government, a government not not established according to the constitution of the of the nation, or not lawful 
entitled to recognize recognition or supremacy, but which has nevertheless supplanted and displaced the government de jure. Remember, we showed you that you was in the last Western Empire, according to their own definition of admiralty and um, Kasula Court. So they said that admiralty law was built upon Kasula law and is the proper successor. So they know they're not the real successors. That's what they had to say, proper successors, but they're not proper. All right, they displaced the government de jure, which was your government, which was the Moorish Tatarian, which is the barbarian or Berber government. A government deemed unlawful or deemed wrongful or unjust, which nevertheless received presently habitual obedience from the bulk of the community. Now, what's a de jure government? a government of right, the true and lawful government established according to the constitution of the nation. This is why there's two seals on the back of the dollar bill. The seal to the left, they call the Illuminati. That's your seal. But the capstone was attached. Right? This is why they always show you the Moors head, detached from the body. Because that represents the capstone. The stone that the builders refuse will always be the head cornerstone. <laughs> Bob Molly, they give Bob Molly. <laughs> <laughs> the head symbolizes the stone that the builders refuse, but it will always be the head cornerstone. You get it, the head. This is why they always show you the moors with the head, but without the body. Right. Just like the capstone not attached to the goddamn rest of the pyramid on the on the dollar bill. Cause what it says? It says lawful entitled to recognition and supremacy and the administration of nations, but which is actually cut off from power and control. All control. Damn, there it is. So this is why they don't mind showing you the Moore's head because it was cut off from power or control. Or why they, Right. A government deemed lawful or deemed rightful or just, which nevertheless has been supplanted or displaced. That is to say, which received, not presently, although it received formally, Habitual obedience from the bulk of the community. Now you're just Negro, blacks, and colors. Oh, the point is. <laughs> Look at Watch them the now. Sleepy Hollow. Oh God, did they crackheads? Oh shit. Uh, oh, uh, they thieves <laughs> and trying to steal bubble gum and oh sh oh they in jail at an alarming rate. Sixty five percent of them. Even though they're only fourteen percent of the of the population of the United States citizens, oh my God! Look at them! Look at what they have done to themselves. <laughs> Watch the movie Sleepy Hollow. Yes, yeah, Sleepy that Hollow. Head. Right. Ich um, Ichabod Crane, that damn head off. <laughs> Ichabod Crane showing you right there about that head. Exactly. So any government that pretends to hold power and wills authority without being answerable to these laws are de facto. An unlawful government is ruled by occupation, usurpation, and exploitation. This is what we have. They justify the existence by the rule of force and coerce instead of the rule of law. And this is once again according to the law of nations. So although the current de facto Anglo-Saxon European Administrative United States, Title 28, USC, Section 3002, parentheses 15, is mirroring the, gov the general government, us. They remain subjects of the government de jure, which they no longer represent the interests of the true nationals, aboriginals, indigenous people, 
in the general nation government of the Republic United States of America, i.e., call it black Negro, African American, Afro American, Hispanic, Latino, Indian, and Asian American, i.e., misnomered, herein after referred to as the Moorish Nationals, of whom are the true Aboriginal landowners of the Republic United States of America. Because remember, you took your pledge to the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness for all. You took your oath to that. You were saying that shit up all the way up into the sixth grade. In assembly hall every morning. Right? So this is why we find out that the first step in liquidating the people is to erase its memory. Destroy its books, its culture, its history. Then have someone write new books, manufacture a new culture, invent a new history. Before long, the nation will begin to forget what it is and what it was. This is Mylon Kundura, the book of laughter and forgetting. And this is what has happened to us as a people. Are there any questions yeah, about anything that we're over today? Go ahead. Oh, I don't have a question. No, but somebody said something, though. Oh, did the Bible one of those things? One of those no, the Bible, is a, the Bible actually is a summary of all the ancient knowledge up until that time in which that the Bible was put together. Um, so it's knowledge from out of Samaria, which is Babylon, or Mesopotamia. It's knowledge from out of... Um, the Astrian text, which is out of Iran and Iraq, it's knowledge from out of Egypt. So it's knowledge from all over the so-called Eastern world at that time period. Um, so that's what the Bible is, is a summary of that information. Um, some things based on, on personal aspects at the time period, but the vast majority of the Bible um, is, is um, metaphysical, esoteric, and occult in his teachings. So you can still use it. It's like uh, the, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater type of thing with the Bible. You want to throw it out, but God damn, when you reread it and it says 1 Corinthians 3.16 that do you not know that your body is the temple of God and stuff like that and you're reading this stuff yeah. and like, damn, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't throw this shit out. So, you so that's get around the Bible, it. the Quran, um, and the many other so-called holy scriptures they, they have their place, but we as a people have a right in order to set forth and put together our own Bible mm -hmm. or basic instructions before leaving earth, as we call it, as the acronym. Mm -hmm. All right. Queen Mother, you have any comments or anything that you want to say? Um, I would just like to urge everyone if you can go to org uh I'm sorry change.org i have a petition there i've been sending it out to um friends on my facebook um timeline and i plan to go to Aline's and start sending inboxing messages for you to sign the petition it's for a hearing a congressional hearing but we are not going to ask congress for anything we're going to stand and demand to reclaim and we're going to confiscate our land and all of our birthrights. I only have, I put it out on uh, Friday uh, when I last looked earlier today, there were only 80 some uh, signatures. I'd like to have thousands. The more signatures we have, the greater um, weight the petition carries. Go on, I'm sorry. You said it's um it's where we where we gotta go to the um uh, get to it? It's uh change dot org is where I put it. But in the last couple of days I've been sending inboxes the petition to people on Facebook 
to have the sign in. Yeah, I signed, and I've seen two people share from my page. They signed as well. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and I um, posted it on my page as well and signed. So, mm -hmm. oh, and Brother Sakari said he signed it also. So. Yes, I also have been working on uh, getting uh, our, our identities were stolen. Identity theft is the greatest crime, they say, in this land and internationally. And um, it has been done to all of our people. We need to, and some have been telling me, sue, sue, sue. I'd like to see us file a class action suit for the identity theft that we've suffered over 200 years. And I would also need people to work with me on compiling a motion and complaint. Baby, keep so wet. All right, I'm going to have to mute everybody but I'm the Queen Mother. Because a lot of um, feedback. I don't know how to find that shit. How you find that, bro? Oh, snap. <laughs> All right, Queen Mother, can you speak again? Um, I, I was able to clear up this the background noise. Okay, the petition is on change.org. For those who can go to that on the computer, I am going to continue inboxing the petition to uh, individuals on Facebook for signatures. And as I stated, we're, it's for a congressional hearing, but we're not asking for anything. We're going to take a stand and reclaim what's rightfully ours. Indeed. And I also stated that identity theft is the greatest crime in this land and on an international level. And our people, are, our identities were stolen. We were reclassified as Negro, Black, Colored, Mulatto, African American. And uh, these foreigners have been benefiting from the identities they've stolen from us. And it's time for us to do something about it. It's way past time. Exactly. I'm suggesting a class action lawsuit. We can do it with at least 50 people. Minimum is 50 people. Okay. And through post Liminium, it's a law that says we, after war, you're supposed to be restored. You're supposed to be, um, you're supposed to be in reinstituted. Mm hmm your status. We didn't leave our land. We didn't cede our land. We remained here. We are prisoners of war, but yet right. we haven't done anything about that. So it's Indeed. time for us. And um, it comes to mind in September 25th, I think was the date in 1985, there was a boxing match between Sugar Ray Leonard and... Um, Roberta Durand, who was known as the man with the hands of stone. It was the second of three fights that they had. 
and in this particular fight that was at the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans, it was billed as the super fight. And uh, Leonard was demoralizing and uh, demeaning Duran for a good seven rounds. He was doing the Ali, uh, Ali Shuffle and so many other things. It was a beautiful fight. I was watching it with my spouse. And in the near the end of the eighth round, Duran turned his back to Leonard and said to the referee, no moth, no moth, meaning no more. He couldn't take any more. Right. I remember that. I implore you, my people, this is our super fight. But we're not going to turn our backs anymore to our oppressors. We're going to face them and say no more. I agree. Definitely. We have to do this. We've got to do this way past time. All right. We have about 30 people that's online right now. Who is willing in order to help with um, this class action suit to help write it up? Help get this thing rolling. I know I am. I am. I know I am. All right. I am. So that means that we have to get information together on what we need to do. So everyone that is willing, um, I'm going to give you the Queen Mother's um, email address. It's C E L A H E L I A N A. B E Y at Gmail dot com. Can you spell it one more time? C E L A H E L I A N A B E Y at Gmail dot com. Got it. All right, so we need to write up um we have to put all this information together somehow. Um, we want, but we want um, Queen Mother to look at the information. Um, we can designate who, um, whoever Queen Mother can designate in order to um, put all the information together um, from the spurts and from the summaries and the documents on which that she gets and gathers. She can send it to a designated individual so that we can get this action, um, this class action suit going. And get this um because we have to take in order to do a class action suit we have to take it to a federal um level or the supreme court level the supreme court with walter plecker and i think you brought that um yes you know, we're talking about that the first part of the meeting today mm -hmm. plecker, um had all the other states followed suit he started right. in virginia in virginia Mm-hmm. Exactly. And all 50 states have done the same thing. Right. It's time for all us right. to reap our benefits. Yeah, we have to. We don't have no choice. Thank you. Great meeting. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Goddess. Thank you. Thank you, Clinton Mother. Nigga Bawima. Thank you all. Manichi Waama. Manichi. Bawima. All right. Um, if there's no further questions. I guess we'll end this meeting. I hope sure they want to you. Also, everybody email Queen Mother part of your statement so we can get a designated person to put this, put this together um, from your research what we need to have inside of um, inside of the class action suit. So we need everybody to write something up to put in there. Thank you all. Washington.
Washita ish. Washita ish. Washita ish. Washita ish.